in the national championship. Rick Leach of Michigan, who has started every single game except one since his freshman days at Michigan. He is now a senior. Let's take a look at the two opposing quarterbacks and their career statistics. As you can see, Montana has the better percentage of completion by some 6%. But look at the number of touchdowns. 31 touchdown passes by Leach, 15 for Montana. If you want to get an idea of what style goes with each man, take a look at this next statistic in terms of running. Rick Leach has carried for 357 times and scored 24 touchdowns. And as you can see, Montana, 63 carries, a total of eight yards and eight touchdowns, which leads one to believe that he's had a lot of quarterback speed. Now coming onto the field, the Michigan band. Now, as we said, the passing specialist today is Montana. The versatile performer, perhaps, is Leach. These are the two dueling quarterbacks. <laughs> Quarterbacks have excellent receivers to throw to. As the Michigan band starts down the field with the floating block M, you see that Pete Hollihan, the flanker, and Ralph Clayton, the flanker of Michigan, are perhaps the most dangerous. But also look for Veer of Notre Dame and Gene Johnson of Michigan, the tight end, to see plenty of action here today. In addition to two fine football teams and two great quarterbacks, we also have two great fight songs. The victors being played by the University of Michigan. And now the Michigan band will form Irish on the field and the Notre Dame victory march. marching band is here today and both teams uh, both the bands rather will be performing here at halftime now we've talked mainly about passing but obviously both teams have great runners and in just a moment we'll be back to take a look at them if that is the weather yes there's plenty of spirit here on both sides in the Notre Dame Stadium as Michigan returns to South Bend for the first time in 36 years well, I mentioned runners, and of course the running attack has to work for both teams today. There are four outstanding runners on the field, two for Michigan and two for Notre Dame. First of all, the Wolverines count on the speed of number 25, Harlan Huckleby. The deep back in the eye formation, but we may see him in a little bit different formation here today. If the word from the Michigan camp proves to be true, Harlan Huckleby. Now, Notre Dame counters with a speedster of their own. Vegas Ferguson wears number 32. Most valuable player in the Cotton Bowl game and a victory over Texas. At fullback for Michigan is number 33, Russell Davis, a senior who gained more than 1,000 yards in 77. Was named by his teammates as Michigan's most valuable player last year. Tough man to knock off his feet. And for the Irish, it's number 30 at fullback. The quick-hitting Jerome Heaven. Certain to become the all-time leading rusher in Notre Dame football history. In fact, he needs only 341 yards 
to surpass the all-time record set by the immortal George Gibb. In talking with Bo Schembechler about this Notre Dame team, he said he fears Jerome Heavens as much as any back in the country, simply because he starts faster than anybody in the country in the first seven yards. Well, what about the game overall from a coach's standpoint? Yesterday, we had an opportunity to talk with Bo, Bo Schembechler and Dan Devine. We asked him what each man felt was toughest about his opponent. Well, I think uh, primarily the uh, passing of Montana. Um, the running game is excellent. There's no question about that. But I think maybe the passing game is the thing that uh, we're most concerned about. Are you concerned about the grass field at all? Well, no, we practiced on it uh, oh, about 40% of the time this fall. And uh, I feel that, uh, you know, we can make the adjustment pretty well. Is this the biggest non-conference game you've ever been involved in in Michigan? Well, I think so at Michigan. Uh, there isn't any question about it. Uh, Notre Dame is a great uh, football school, a great institution, great tradition. And uh, we're looking forward to playing them tomorrow. Michigan has always been and probably always will be, Bill, a very fundamental football team. Uh, you can't make mistakes, but getting it down into personnel, we feel uh, that Leach uh, and company, uh, they have a, a great inside attack, and, of course, his option running and his option running and passing are tremendously offensive uh, threats. Defensively, uh, they come off the ball as well as any team I've ever seen. They just hit and pursue, and... Nobody scores many points on them, so it's basic, uh, basically a Bo Schembechler and Michigan ball club. How important is this game to Notre Dame? Bo says it's the most important game Michigan's ever played outside the conference. Well, let me put it this way. It's just as important to Notre Dame as it is to Michigan. The band of the Fighting Irish, America's first college band, celebrating its 133rd year. It was formed in 1845, some 40 years before ever the first football game was played. And, of course, they're leading up to their victory march, which they think is the most famous fight song in all of football, spelling out Irish on the field themselves. So let's join this Notre Dame band and the Notre Dame victory march. Well, at first, this is a bit of a change. They're going to salute Michigan by playing the victors to all of the Michigan fans assembled here today in the Notre Dame Stadium. Of course, next year, the opening game of the 1979 season for both teams will be played in Ann Arbor. The public address announcer says the greatest victory march of all, the Notre Dame victory march. performing out on the field in the pregame, and of course, we'll be seeing him again at halftime. Back for a final word about both teams after this. Just think how remarkable it is. Michigan and Notre Dame have produced 177 All-America football players between them. Such legendary names in coaching, too, as Rockley, Layton, Leahy, Barsigia, Chrysler, Kipke, Yost, Osterbaum, 
Yes, this is a great series, and we're very happy that it's been renewed after this lapse of 35 years. Notre Dame, loser of the first game to Missouri, 3 to nothing, but with two weeks to prepare for this one. Michigan, winner over Illinois, 31 to nothing, and anxious to get back at an ancient rivalry. It'll be an interesting matchup. In fact, it's just about rated dead even by all of the experts. One thing we think is certain, it'll be a wide open game. Michigan has said that this will be a game where they're going to open things up. It remains to be seen. The fact is, though, the scene is set for this one, number 12 in the long series that dates back to 1887. And as I mentioned before, it's an ideal day for football here in the Notre Dame Stadium. The scene is set then for this battle between the seventh-ranked Wolverines of Michigan and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Stay tuned for not only this game, but at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central Time, Alabama and USC. <laughs> NCAA College Football Today presents the seventh-ranked Michigan Wolverines. Featuring their talented quarterback, Rick Leach, and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame with their great quarterback, Joe Montana. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the folks at Chevrolet, who invite you to come on in to your Chevy dealers coast to coast for a look at an all-star lineup of cars. By IBM, helping put information to work for people. And by Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. That scene has been in northeastern Indiana for 48 years. Notre Dame Stadium as two giants of college football are about to make their appearance, we don't know which team is coming out first because of a psychological battle between Dan Devine of the Fighting Irish and Bo Schembechler of the Michigan Wolverines, meeting for the first time in 35 years. And we've said for years that college football, all the color and excitement, what a way to spend an autumn afternoon. And Frank Broyles, who knows about national championships and great games, is just as excited as Bill Fleming and I are about what will take place in just a few minutes. Frank, this is some afternoon. Chris, I'd like to welcome all of our fans to this football game. This is excitement at very best. It's always a peak here in Notre Dame, and this is college football at its very best, and we're looking forward to this contest. Well, who do you think, which team will come out first? Well, I would guess that Bo will have to come out first. He stays in the locker room at uh, Michigan last and makes the other team watch him take the field with 100,000 people cheering him on. And of course, the home crowd here is something to behold. It, it causes the opponent to have fits. Well, I don't think Michigan are awed by this crowd before they got here. But once they're here, it will have an effect on the game because the partisan fans give this home team of Notre Dame some momentum. And when they get this momentum, their cheers let them keep it. And once they lose it to Michigan, their fans will help them get it back, and that's important in any football game. What do the coaches have up their sleeve? Anything different? They have some intrigue. And talking to Bo Schembechler, he was telling me, Chris, that they've been working on new wrinkles all spring and all fall, and they did not use them in their opener against Illinois, and they're going to try them today against Notre Dame. And, of course, uh, excuse me, Don, uh, Dan Devine was telling me he's got a couple of dipsy doodles that he's going to use and he thinks can give him a big play against this strong Michigan defense. We've already had a beginning of the Battle of the Bands, Michigan and Notre Dame. We have a battle of two excellent quarterbacks as we see only an empty tunnel. We're on the west side of the field, and, of course, that's in a northerly direction here in South Bend, Indiana. So we're having the little psychological warfare, and I guess since they haven't met in 35 years, Notre Dame winning the last game in 1943, well, they're doing a little psych job right down there in the tunnel. But, Frank, I know you're impressed with the conservative uh, attitude of the two coaches, and as you uh, mentioned, so a few new wrinkles today. They will uh, play it close to the vest, starting out. They're both football conservatives, and what they're saying is avoid losing before you try to win. Another way of saying it is, let's don't take unnecessary risks and gambles and throw away any chance of victory. What they teach is, avoid mistakes. 
don't beat yourself and the way you do this is really simple simplicity of execution then you have good sound fundamentals and you go into the ball game with the idea they're going to beat themselves and we're going to win this is a partisan crowd sellout over 59,000 as it always is and of course you hear a few dissenting voices uh, there are 3,500 tickets that went to the University of Michigan so the Wolverines are going to be on the losing side of the cheering but not in the spirit department alone here we have a natural grass field ladies and gentlemen the finest grass field I've ever seen it is Marion bluegrass this has caused Bo to make a few comments and of course the defending champion Notre Dame fighting Irish their fans still think they're number one despite an 0 to 3 loss to Missouri whereas Michigan 31 to nothing and now we look down and we get the word that only the game captain are coming out on the field well there's a switch Frank Broyles well I think that uh, Michigan is wait the tunnel I've been in that tunnel as a player and coach and coming out of it you come out together and you want one to go first and the other second of course there's no rule in the playbook Chris it says that the visiting team has to take the field first Bo doesn't want to see his he doesn't want his players to see the welcome that the Notre Dame fans give to their team because that is a traumatic experience. All right, in the green jerseys for Notre Dame. We're looking at number three, that's quarterback Joe Montana. Number 30 is Jerome Heavens. And a great All-American linebacker, number 55, Bob Golick. The referee today is a veteran Big Ten official. His name is Gene Calhoun, an attorney from Madison, Wisconsin. He's in the white cap. And now coming in from the far side of the field, the east side, we have number 46, Jerry Meter, a very fine linebacker. And number 33 will be calling his number a lot today, Russell Davis. Get back. The toss of the coin. All right, introduce yourself here. This is Captain Golick, Heavens, and Montana meet Captain Davis and Leach. Oh, Captain Meter. Okay, you're the visiting team. Who's going to call the toss? You got to call it? All right, there's a head. That's a tail. Call it while it's in the air. I'll catch it. You're going to have to get back. Just get back. Fans causing the referee Gene Calhoun a little problem, and this is about the friendliest oh, well, these five players will be all afternoon. Tails it is. You've won the toss. You Michigan take winning. Ball or you can take a goal. Take the ball. Which goal do you want to defend? Defend this goal. All right. Turn around. Get back. Get back. He's the man in command, hey, Gene Calhoun, and some of the fans who. Here comes the Michigan team, undefeated, having knocked off. Illinois a week ago 31 to nothing they're in white with a maize and blue and those spectacular helmets that the great Fritz Chrysler developed many years ago in fact going back to 1939 so Frank Riles Michigan that long stage wait they have made their entrance and here's their coach Bo Schembechler in his 10th year and what a great guy and what a tactician of intercollegiate football he is that Chris and he is an intense person I don't know of any coach that I've ever met that's more intense than he is his team play just exactly the way that his personality exemplifies he they are strong and they are ready to play you can see that and there you see the green jerseys of the fighting Irish the defending national champions who've had two weeks to lick their wounds on the upset handed them by the Missouri Tigers. We're in South Bend, Notre Dame Stadium. You get an idea once the fans get away and we can get a look at the team at the size of the Notre Dame players. Frank. 6-5 is a usual happening on this campus. They are just physically overpowering, particularly on defense and in the offensive line. But Michigan does have the most team speed. So we're going to see a physically strong team against quickness and speed. So it's a good contest. And music such an important part of intercollegiate football. Let's listen to that great tune by the Notre Dame band. <laughs> Notre Dame Stadium you'll be hearing that song again and again we'll have the kickoff very soon right now this break and we'll return grouped in prayer before the start of this game the kickoff Michigan won the toss they will receive you're looking at the fighting Irish of Notre Dame oh and one 
There's a slight cloud cover, which adds to the excitement here because the receivers had a better opportunity to see the ball if thrown or kicked to them instead of a bright sunshine, which it was earlier today. We have Chuck Mail, number four, who will do the kicking off for Notre Dame. And Frank, this is the quietest it's been for the last two hours. Notre Dame will have to give the ball away on the opening kickoff. They have chosen the, the end to the right. This is a co-ed institution now. A thousand young ladies in the 8,500 student body. There goes the Michigan band on the far side. Harlan Huckleby is number 25 at the left of your screen. Number 26, Roosevelt Smith, is on the opposite side. And let me tell you, Bo Schembechler puts his best men back there, Frank, to receive kicks. Both of those two youngsters have 4-4 speed, 9-5, and they can blaze down that field. All right, number four, Chuck Mayo. Ready to move to the ball. All in readiness now. Gene Calhoun, the referee, says, play ball. The minute the ball is touched, the clock will start in the Michigan-Notre Dame game. That is Huckleberry slipping, coming out to the 5, 10, 15. Now moving beautifully up to about the 17-yard line from where Michigan will try to move the ball with their option quarterback, Rich Leach, as Tony Belden, number 36, made a strong and sure tackle on number 25 Huckleby, who goes back into the huddle now. Rick Leach is a quarterback for the Wolverines. He's a senior from day one. He has been the Wolverine quarterback. Up over the ball will be Steve Nauta, number 50. Rodney Feaster is set to the left in the wishbone formation from the 18-yard line. And a loose ball. Russell Davis has Fumbled on the very first play from scrimmage, Frank. Scott Zetter has recovered the ball for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And get this, the ball is at the 16 and a half of Michigan. Here it is. It's just a straight handoff, but Notre Dame penetrated. Their defense is not a bend and maybe keep from breaking defense. It's an attack. They penetrated hit Davis just as the exchange took place and the resulting fumble. Very uncommon for Michigan. And now look quickly at the Notre Dame quarterback, number three from the 16 and a half. He gets to number 30, Jerome Heavens, and Heavens finds a hole. Number 30 in green, Heavens, tackled by Ron Simpkins, number 40. As we look at Joe Montana, the quarterback, number three. There's Jerome Heavens, number 30, from East St. Louis, Illinois. Vegas Ferguson from Richmond, Indiana. And there's Pete Holloman from Liverpool, New York. And Dave Condini will start at split end today. He hails from Cincinnati. Now, with the ball at the 10, it's a second down and four for Notre Dame. Quick opener, quick handoff, moving the ball down to about the seven. Heavens now has carried the ball twice. Who just joined us on the very first play from scrimmage following the opening kickoff. Russell Davis fumbled for the Michigan Wolverines. Up front, we have... Rob Martinovich, this man will not play today. He sprained his ankle in practice yesterday. Houtman will take his place, as you see the Huffman brothers, the garden center. Tim Foley is the right tackle. Nick Vare is the tight end. Kevin Hart makes the action at that position, son of Leon Hart, the Hall of Famer. Now, it is a first and goal from the seven for Notre Dame. During the ball was Vegas Ferguson. Ron Simpkins now, number 40, has been in on two tackles, joined by number 46. And that's Jerry Meters. We look at coach Bo Schimbeckler. And already a break for Notre Dame, a turnover by the Wolverines. Oh, and that's what every coach fears. So excited, getting up high for the ball game and fumble the first play of the game. Now we have a second down, goal to go from the Michigan Six. Michigan and White, Notre Dame with the ball. Second down, no score. Grindinger caught that ball from Joe Montana and Notre Dame scores its first touchdown of the 1978 season a six yard six pointer six to nothing let's look at it from the end zone Chris you're going to see a busted defense they fake off tackle and roll out just a little bit the tight end is wide open because the man in motion had made them deploy their defense differently and he did not have a man covering it 
Two minutes have not gone by here in this ball game after a turnover in Notre Dame. Wow, and a second and goal, a six-yard pass, and now the point after attempt is up. Joe Eunice, number 99, splits the uprights at 7 to nothing. 13.07 remaining in the first quarter. Notre Dame 7, Michigan nothing. After one minute and 53 seconds of the ball game, Notre Dame has taken a 7 to nothing lead as Michigan fumbled on the very first play from scrimmage from their own 16. Davis fumbled. It was recovered by Notre Dame, and in four plays, they went 16 and a half yards, a six-yard touchdown by quarterback Joe Montana. As Huckleby tries it again, this time wisely, lets it go through the end zone for a touchback. It'll come out to the 20. So, Michigan now will have a first and 10 at their own 20. Seven to nothing. There is a marker on the field. Let's watch for the referee, Gene Calhoun. Chris, that's a 15-yard personal penalty against Notre Dame. They got a little bit over eager covering the kick. All right, you're looking at number 93. He caught the touchdown pass. A surprise. He was in the ball game. Mervin Johnson, their coach, told me for blocking purposes. Right. But when they looked up, Chris, on the play before, when they put a man in motion, Michigan did not adjust properly in the secondary. And the tight end was open. They spotted it from the press box. They came right back and called the play. And he was all alone in the end zone for the touchdown. He's from Dallas, Texas. Now Michigan with the ball at the 35 with a first and 10. Penalty moving them out there. 15 yards. Rick Leach, number seven. The option. Huckleby. A good block by Davis, number 33. Springs him for a little yardage, perhaps two. Let's see where the officials bring it back. Restick on the tackle as we look at Rick Leach, the quarterback. In his backfield, Russell Davis, who unfortunately fumbled on the first play. Arlen Huckleby has returned both kicks. Here's Ralph Clayton, a wingback, who can really fly. He's from Detroit, Michigan. Rodney Feaster, number 18, is a split end from Flint. These are the Michigan cheerleaders. What a day. Hope you'll stay with us and enjoy the action of this game and later. Southern California and Alabama from Birmingham. What an afternoon on ABC. Now we have a second down and seven at the 38. Harlan Huckleby, he is really getting a workout, Frank. He is an excellent runner, but Chris, if the fans will watch, but you're going with the offensive line. John right? Giesler, Bart Phoenix, Nauta is the center, number 50. John Arbiznik, Dan Kwiatkowski is also up front, along with John Power, 67. And here are the two tight ends, Smurz and Johnson. They're messengers for Bo Schimbackler. Now we have a third down and three. The ball is at the 42. Michigan and White. Notre Dame leads seven to nothing. And you saw that bit of action. Number 77, a senior Mike Calhoun from Austintown, Ohio. Chris, they staggered the snap count, threw Notre Dame all side. But if the fans will see what Bo Schimbach has been working on all spring and, and fall is the lining up in the wishbone and then stemming to different formations, making Notre Dame change their coverage at the last minute, a la the Dallas Cowboys. Notre Dame now two penalties, 20 yards. We can take another look at 77. Here he is. He just was used to going on the rhythm that, Notre, uh, that Michigan had used on the first series. And they stagger the count. He's offside. Wishbone split to the near side. Feaster, first and 10 from the 47. Costly penalty. Wow. There they now get an idea of the size. Ralph Clayton carried. 77 was there. Calhoun, Weston, 74. Woo. And number 70, Scott Setter of Elk Grove, Illinois. There you see Joe Montana, the Notre Dame quarterback. He's the come from behind kid, they call him. But the at the moment, back kid. his team leads seven to nothing. Take advantage of a turnover as Feaster comes to the near side. Pardon me, we have a second down and 11, a loss of one at the 46. 22 goes to the left, that's Clayton. A flanker and a split end go out. Huckleby is out there too. And underneath they hit Russell Davis. And Russell Davis may have gotten into Notre Dame territory for the first time today. He was stopped by Jim Browner, number 33. Flag. Flag down on the field. Another penalty against Notre oh. Dame. Personal foul against the Fighting Irish. They are hungry after the upset two weeks ago by Missouri. And after all, they are defending national champions. They have so much pride. 
And you know, a team uh, has, we've learned in coaching that a team doesn't really reach their potential until they've had difficult and come through trouble together. They lost to Mississippi last year in the second game, won the national championship, and now they think they still have that opportunity before. That was Dan Devine arguing with the headlinesman Richard Weiler of Chicago. He's a lieutenant in the fire department in Chicago. 22 in the slot is Clayton, Ralph Clayton, with a first and 10 at the Notre Dame 34. Lefty Leach. He's long. Open. Oh, look out. Feaster had gotten behind number 34, Dave Wy Waymer of Charlotte, North Carolina, former offensive player for the Fighting Irish. Incomplete, second down and 10. That's the big gamble that you worry about in going for the bomb on first down. You're in four down territory, so evidently they feel like they're going to use their fourth down to make the first down. But when you go for the bomb, if it's incomplete, it's second 10, and that is a discouraging thing for the offense. If you just joined us, the toss was won by Michigan. They received the opening kickoff. From about the 16, first and 10, Russell Davis fumbled. Notre Dame took over, and it's the Michigan 16 and a half, four plays, a touchdown pass. Grimdinger from Joe Montana, 7 to nothing, Notre Dame. Here now on a second and 10 play, Leach finds Huckleby, number 25. 34, Waymer was there. The rush was put on by 74, 6 foot 5 inch Jeff Weston. But it didn't bother cool, calm Rick Leach. Chris. You, you, you will see that uh, on, the, on that last pass, he had it lobbed perfectly over the defense, but it just went through Huck of his arms. And, of course, a great form of pass defense is rushing that quarterback. Notre Dame can do that just as effectively as any team in America. We have a third down and 10 now from the 34 of Notre Dame. Big play for the Wolverines, who trail 0-7 to seven from the wishbone. Now they shift, like the Cowboys of Dallas. Leach. Oh, he wanted that ball. Number 10, Randy Harrison of Hammond, Indiana, a senior. Got his hand on the ball, and it brings up a fourth down and 10. The line of scrimmage is a Notre Dame 34. Will Leach. they go for the field goal? Well, of course, when the ball is outside the 20 and they miss, it comes to the previous spot. They're not going to go for it. Too, too much well, risk. They want well, to back Notre Dame up, Chris. As a coach of national champions, what would you do in a situation like this? With Steve Little last year or some of the Texas kickers, we'd go for it. That's Greg Wilner, number one, who uh, against Illinois had six punts, averaging 40.6. Yardage is not the important point here. Oh. There were a lot of Michigan players there, but they could not keep it in the field of play. So Notre Dame gets the ball, stopping the Wolverines' drive, forcing a fourth down punt, and the Fighting Irish take over. First and 10 at the 20 with Notre Dame in the lead, 7 to nothing. Well, this is a shock to the Michigan people. Very uncharacteristic of Notre Dame, I mean, of Michigan to fumble early in the ball game. All right, defensively, Michigan now coming up. Notre Dame in green and gold, and they're glistening gold helmets as the sun comes out from beneath the clouds here in South Bend, Indiana. There you see the defensive unit. Jerry Meter, 46, 90 is Godfrey. Kites, 55, Greer, 95. And these are important men. Sebron, Simpkins, the linebacker, and Mel Owens, and the deep men will get tested today by Joe Montana, who keeps it on the ground. That is number 30, Heavens. First down for the Fighting Irish. Jerome Heavens carries that ball about 21 yards on a handoff from Joe Montana. First down at the Notre Dame 42. It's a simple all tackle play, but you'll watch it. Heavens makes it all on his own. He has good blocking, but then he sidesteps. They are half back, the left half back, breaks in the secondary. You can see why he's destined to be the leading rush of all time at Notre Dame. East St. Louis, Illinois back. First and 10 from the 42. Huffman over the ball, 56, Montana's number three in green. And number 32, Vegas Ferguson carries, giving Heavens a bit of a rest. He was in on some blocking as Gene Bell now has made back-to-back -back tackles on the Notre Dame offensive unit. The advance is across the 45. Let's see where they spot it. In the white cap, that's the referee, Gene Calhoun. We have a player shaken up. And it's Mel Owens, the right linebacker from DeKalb, Illinois, for the Michigan Wolverines. We'll get his replacement for you in a moment as Notre Dame now has a second and six from the 46. They lead seven to nothing. 
Ferguson again. They're trying to get outside of the Michigan defense here. We're in the first quarter, 9.47 remaining. Mark DeSantis has replaced Mel Owens at linebacker, and he promptly makes a tackle, Frank. Well, the big concern that Michigan defense has, can they stop the power of Notre Dame? As we said at the top of the show, Notre Dame offensive lineman average 6'5", 250 to 260. So they play a bending, they're smaller on defense. Mm -hmm. Can they stop them? That's their concern. All right, Notre Dame that coughed up the ball five times to Missouri. They have a big play here at the midfield stripe, third and two. Oh, look at that. First down. Rindinger, who caught the touchdown pass, caught that one. Number 93, it's a first down at the Michigan 34. And he's the one that Coach Johnson said they're putting in for blocking purposes. But he was again wide open. Michigan had their cornerback on the line of scrimmage. The fake up the middle froze him. The end was in behind him in front of the safety for a big game. And now Condini, number 80, and number 93, Grindinger, are alternating at the uh, split end position. First down at the Michigan 34, Notre Dame leading seven to nothing. That was heavens, but the Michigan defense shut out Illinois last week in winning 31 to nothing. Chris Godfrey, number 90. Dan Devine now shuffling in a lot of players. Sending in Mike Corey now who uh, plays either flanker or quarterback. He goes into the slot to the far side. Second down and seven. Oh, things were really fouled up as you saw. Nick Bear, the tight end, <laughs> he raised up. A little embarrassing, oh, yes. but that happens, Chris. When you put a man in motion, the quarterback's coming out, ordinarily plays, he says, ready, hi! And they snap the ball, but this time he says, get set, he will say, and then the man motion takes about four seconds to go all the way from the right to the left, and you get over anxious. So the ball comes back to the 35. It'll be second down and 12 as they replay the down after the penalty. Fourth penalty, 40 yards against Notre Dame. They lead 7 to nothing. Montana hiding the ball in his hip and now running. Michigan was not fooled a great deal as Montana moves it for about four yards on a second and 12. Kites. From Columbus, Ohio, number 55, middle guard, coming around to make the stop. We'll call it the 32, so it's going to be a third and 10. The difference in this, in the two teams offensively, Chris, is that the quarterback in Notre Dame doesn't run, but they have a sophisticated pass attack, good balance between running and passing. Wholesale substitution by the Notre Dame coaches. Number two, 42, Jim Stone is in the lineup on third and 10, Montana. Pressured. His receivers are covered. Great defensive secondary job by the Michigan Wolverines with a third and ten at the Michigan 32. Gene Bell was the key on covering the intended receiver, Dean Maztec. I don't think I've ever seen Dan DeMine uh, substitute so much, but we know Notre Dame, of course, they have plenty of depth. He's going to keep them fresh knowing that they get awfully tight for a ball game early like this. Here's a great athlete at the right of your screen from Milford, Massachusetts. Joe Restick, the punter for Notre Dame, number seven. Just floats one toward the coffin corner. Will he do it? Two officials lining it up. Let's see where it departed from the field. It departed at the three. What a defensive weapon. Joe Restick puts it out of bounds at the three as Notre Dame leads seven to nothing. 7.49 remaining in the first quarter. We'll take a break and then return. After a beautiful putt by Joe Restick at the three, Michigan takes over. For the third time, they trail zero to seven. A flag goes down as number 25, Harlan Huckleby, knifes out across the five-yard line in sticky territory. Procedure call against Notre Dame. Boy, they're having trouble today. Well, Chris, let me tell you, that takes a lot of courage on Michigan's part to stagger the snap count on your own three-yard line because you can jump offside. You can get a bad snap. And normally you come out and do what you do the best on your uh, snap count that you use most doing the ball game. But that's a real play by Rick Leach to draw them all sides and get first and five. Don't forget USC versus number one Alabama. Last year it was a thriller, Frank. And a renewal is right here on ABC later today. Keith Jackson, Errol Parsegian are waiting there along with Chuck Howard and Andy Sedaris to bring it to you. Rick Leach trying to get out of that deep territory. 
On a first and five following the penalty, Jeff Weston gets Leach at about the eight. Notre Dame playing tough. Defensively, they were worried in the loss of Browner and Fry and Luther Bradley. But thus far today, uh, the tight ends and the two tackles are looking pretty good. And they've got a lot of confidence in Zedek and Case. And Dan Devine was telling me yesterday, Chris, that uh, he feels like his defense is kind of gelled and fell falling right in place. Alan Mitchell was in for one play, replaced now at wing back by number 22, Ralph Clayton, on a second and four from their own nine. Notre Dame leading seven to nothing, first quarter. Leach taking the option, trying for the first down, and he's going to be very, very close. Bob Golick, the All-American middle linebacker, number 55, in on the tackle, helped by Bobby Leopold. Number 61. Let's isolate on Golick. Bob Golick is All-American in football and wrestling. One of the first one in many years. Here he is just pursuing down the line and making a, a saving tackle to keep Reed Leach from breaking into the secondary. He's a great player. You know, the last uh, dual All-American was Moose Krause, the that, athletic director in basketball right. and football here at Notre Dame. All right. Leach has thrown four times, completing one for five yards. Montana has a touchdown pass. Now first and ten, a loose ball! From the 13, the loss is back to the four. Bay made the miscue, and Leach saved the day. Chris, you will see the inside ride series, and the weak side man coming across from the behind the back door gets him in the backfield and causes the fumble. We said at the top of the show, Notre Dame are physically overpowering on defense. Can Michigan run the ball and make enough yardage to keep possession? Now they have a second down and 19 from inside their own five. There is Rick Leach, the senior from Flint, Michigan. Great young athlete, the double wing type formation. Trying to dent the middle of the Notre Dame defense, Russell Davis, number 33, but denying him. There he is, number 55 again, Bob Golick. And of course, later, we will be announcing the Chevrolet offensive and defensive players of the game, so join us as we try to figure out what two players it'll be. Golick won it last year against Southern Cal on ABC telecast. All right, now the ball is out near the nine. It'll be third down and 15 as Notre Dame leads seven to nothing. After Michigan fumbled on the very first play from scrimmage, Joe Montana, four plays, 16 and a half yards, a six-yard touchdown pass to Dennis Grindinger for the score. Feaster and Clayton are potential pass receivers on a third and 15. Trying to surprise the defense, Davis, 33, and Leach keep it on the ground, bring it out to the 13, a gain of four. It's going to be fourth down and 11. I'm Kreider, 58, and Golick, 55 on the tackle. Jam Pack Stadium, Notre Dame. What an exciting day. And you'll see the character of Michigan. They've stood in there with poor field position on their 20 yard line, 17 yard line, 35 and three in their first three possessions. Num Not number one was a walk on last year, Greg Wilner from Miami, Florida. Punter and field goal kicker for the Wolverines and sends a beauty across midfield. Dave Weimer gets it, brings it into Michigan territory at the 46. A 42-yard punt. Well done by Greg Wilner of Miami, Florida for Michigan. Sebron makes the stop. We'll be back. A football excitement on ABC. Number one ranked Alabama tackles the seventh ranked USC Trojans next. cheerleaders as Notre Dame now has the ball first and ten at the 46 of Michigan leading seven to nothing carrying number 30 Jerome Heavens Notre Dame took advantage of a miscue on the part of Michigan four plays went 16 and a half yards to take a seven to nothing lead as we have about four minutes remaining first quarter Mike DeSantio DeSantis rather made the stop for Michigan at the 45 again a one second and nine and Notre Dame has perfect field position to run all throw. Michigan's got to defend both phases of offense. Michigan has rushed for 37 yards. Notre Dame for 47. Oh, here's a dipsy doodle reverse. Number two, Mike Corey of Sioux City, Iowa. Now, we bring in our colleague, and we're glad to have him here today, Bill Fleming. 
Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, one thing that many of the viewers may be noticing, Michigan doesn't look quite as fast as they usually do. They are not used to playing on regular grass. They're wearing this shoe today with only seven cleats, about a half inch uh, in, in, in width, and also they're wearing a, a, a different composition on the sole than they normally do on the artificial turf. Great point, Bill Fleming. Thank you very much. We'll be back to you at our first opportunity as Notre Dame now. Third and two, Corey in motion to the far side of the field from the Michigan 38. A big play. And up to the task was Vegas Ferguson. It appears, as we look at the headlinesman on the far side of the field, that he made it. But cautiously, Gene Callow. Now he says a first and ten for the Fighting Irish. Blocking was Jim Houtman, who took the spot at left guard for the injured Ted Horansky. And what a way to lose a player on the Friday afternoon warm-up session. Dan Devine said he should have called practice off two plays early. He got hurt on the next to last play of practice in sweat clothes. From the Michigan 36, you're looking at number three, Joe Montana from Monongahela, Pennsylvania. And from East St. Louis, Illinois, number 30, Heavens carried Chris Godfrey from Lathrop Village, Michigan. As you look at the scoreboard at the, the end the south end of Notre Dame Stadium. The time remaining coming up to the three minute mark. The back of Bo Schimbeckler, the Michigan coach. With a second and seven, Notre Dame has the ball at the 33 of the Wolverines. That all Notre Dame so far, but Michigan has a lot of character. They're going to stay right in there and make it tough. Old. Last time Notre Dame had the ball, they got to the 32 of Michigan and had the punt. Montana wants a little more. Wide open. Number 86, Dean Maztec. It's another first down for the Fighting Irish. Dominating play now as they have come to the Michigan 18. Mike Harden on the tackle. This is a pass to the crossing end, the tight end coming across, faking the block. After they had faked the sweep the other way, he's wide open because the defensive end had rushed. Very good call. Just call him in a perfect defense for that pass to be successful. Grindinger is in along with number 45, Pete Pallas. First and ten at the 18 of Michigan. Joe Montana, number three. They lead seven to nothing. First quarter. Keeping it on the ground, Vegas Ferguson. 6'1", 192 junior. Mike DeSantis again on the tackle. This time at the 16. The Fighting Irish second down and eight. Two minutes, three seconds left first quarter. Notre Dame leading seven to nothing. Mixing up their plays beautifully. Three passes out of four completed. Now, speedster Chris Haynes, injured in the Missouri game, is split to the far side of the field on second and eight. Number 82. Michigan defense beautifully. In quickly on Heavens on a handoff from Montana. Oh, they didn't gain even a yard, so we'll call it third down and eight. DeSantis and Curtis Greer, number 95. Kites, Simpkins, Godfrey, Meter, Sebron, DeSantis are the men up front for the Michigan Wolverines in white. There are those distinctive helmets. They're beautiful, aren't they, Frank? Fritz Price. 35 years ago designed. Pete Pallas is the up back on a third and eight. Montana slipping was Chris Haynes that we were talking about, but he was covered closely <laughs> by Mark Brayman of Midland, Michigan. Number 28, and it brings up a fourth down and eight, we'll call it, with the line of scrimmage between the 15 and 16 of Michigan. And it was a, you might have had an understatement covered closely. <laughs> of course, the Notre Dame Parson fans were hollering pass interference, but it was a good play on the defensive halfback's part. All right, Joe Eunice will try to hit on his first field goal of the year. Notre Dame leading seven to nothing. The spot is the 22 and a half. 32 and a half yard kick. It's blocked by the Wolverines. Mike Jolly of Melvindale, Michigan. Number 16, and that will fire up the Wolverines. Oh, you better believe it will. He's a youngster that made the great play on the defensive pass, uh, on defense against the pass just a minute ago. He's the only returning secondary man they have. So, Here you can see him coming in from right inside. And how he got through there, I don't know. Oh, he came from outside, just like he should. Yeah, from the left side. A little delay on the, on the kick and hold those part. So now following the missed 32 and a half yard field goal, Michigan, Rick Leach, first and 10. Clayton goes in motion left. 
And blocking for Huckleberry. There is coach Dan Devine. The mouth gets a little dry on the sideline. Does it ever. That water tastes good. You can't <laughs> survive without it. A little <laughs> Gatorade or something. All right. The ball is nearly at the 24. Or at the 25, rather. Let's call it the 25, or it'll be second down and five for the Wolverine. Kwiatkowski, 69. And our Besnick, number 64, pulled and blocked on that last play. We have 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Clayton comes to the right side of the field. Out of view now at the bottom of your screen. Rick Leach, lefty, goes to work. Overthrown. He saw two men covering number 18, Rodney Feaster. And he let it sail. Waymer, 34, Restick, number 7, in green. We're covering, and number 7 in white, Rick Leach, has thrown five times, completing one for five yards. Normally, when you get started like this, you would like to come in and throw some delayed patterns where you build mm -hmm. up the quarterback's confidence by hitting a man uh, slipping through the backfield. You sure complete and let him run for it. Now split to the left, in for Clayton is Mitchell, number 30. We have a third down and five. The poise of Rick Leach, but more important, the secondary and the linebacker coverage of potential pass receivers by Notre Dame was superior. They had every receiver covered. Even when he rolls, rolled out to the left and scrambled, they still covered the receivers, and he could not release it. We have come to the end of the first quarter. It'll be a fourth down for Michigan when we return as Notre Dame leads seven to nothing. NCAA college football starting out today at Notre Dame Stadium. This is the first play of the second quarter. Notre Dame leading seven to nothing. It's a fourth and 13 punting situation. Greg Wilner with his third punt. Has plenty of time. Good protection. Back deep is Dave Weimer. Ooh, but he hung on to the ball. Hit hard. First by the offensive back, Huckleby 25, and 26, Roosevelt Smith. They're the kick returners for Michigan, and Bo puts his best men in there. You know, the hidden yardage, Chris, in the kicking game, if you don't put good people covering them, then you get this 10, 15 yard return every time, and that's the same as the first down. So he's got his first team of their own defense because he wants to win on every phase of the game. Right. Notre Dame now with the ball at the 32, their own. First down. That's Vegas Ferguson carrying and drawing a lot of Wolverine white shirts. Jerry Meter was one of them. 46, and Roy Simpkins, number 40. Number 32 going back. He's in the backfield now with Heavens, 30. Uh, along with Pete Hullahan. And Dan Devine does a lot of shifting of personnel. Dave Condini is in the lineup, number 80. It's going to be a second and seven. That's Heavens carrying on the play. I don't believe enough for a first down. No, very far away from first down. It's going to bring up a third down. And making the stop underneath was Turgovac. You can see the stats that it's all Notre Dame, and Michigan needs a break. They, the best thing to happen to them is get a break and get out of that quagmire of having to stop, start the ball deep on their end of the field. Notre Dame has come up with two out of four on the third down conversions. On the reverse, look at this pitch. The ball is loose. Jim Stone, number 42, was able to get to the ball at the 20. That was their dipsy doodle that, he, that Dan was telling us yesterday. Since Houlihan was a quarterback in high school, he was going to run the option on the misdirection. You'll see the inside reverse. Houlihan is coming down, or either... It's Corey. Corey. They both were quarterbacks in high school. Either one of them could run it, but he pitched it bad. And Stone was the last man, so Joe Restick has to come in and punt. Opening moments of the second quarter, a big rush, but Restick calmly gets one high in the air, bouncing around midfield, and this will be the best field position that the Wolverines have gotten thus far in the ball game. They have worked the ball into Notre Dame territory. We'll see what they do following this message. Bo Schembechler in his 10th year at Michigan. What a record he's had. Trailing now 0-7. to seven. His team has it as you see across midfield. First and 10. The Notre Dame 49 and a half. 13 minutes remaining in the first half. 
Ooh, a nice hole made for Russell Davis, number 33. Steve Nauta, number 50 of Norristown, Pennsylvania, and Greg Bartnick of Detroit, 61, opened that hole. And oh, how Davis came through to the 41. It'll be second down and two. Every play up into this one, Chris, had been straight ahead blocking. This last play was a trap where they influenced the man across the line who was charging so hard early. Weston trapped him, and it was a nice hole. About one and a half. Second down for Michigan. 22 coming to the near side is Clayton into the slot now on the eye. Rick Leach. Trying to come back. Rodney Feaster, number 18. The pass was low and short. A good effort by Feaster, however, is Dave Waymer, number 34 of Notre Dame, covered on the play. It's a third down, one and a half for Michigan. Michigan on penalties, two penalties, got to the Notre Dame 34. That's about it. Right now, they're at the 41 of the Fighting Irish. And there's Joe Montana, who threw the touchdown pass, the first of the year for the Irish. A six-yarder to Brendinger. Seven to nothing. Irish in the lead, and the green jerseys on the left. Third down. And resourcefully, Rick Leach gets the first and ten for the Wolverines. Randy Harrison on the tackle. Leach the senior, 194 pounds, from Flint, Michigan. He likes pressure, and there is a lot of it here in Notre Dame Stadium today. Most coaches like for their quarterback to make the big play on third down. If they can handle it themselves, then they develop the leadership that make the team block for them much better. Thus far, Michigan with one third down conversion. It came at the right time as they now have the ball at the Notre Dame 36. It's the deepest that they've worked the ball without the help of penalties. 30 Mitchell in the slot. First down play. Huckleby. Oh, beautiful pirouetting by Rick Leach, spinning, finally handing off. Joe Restick made the stop on Huckleby, and the Wolverines are coming to life now, their offensive unit. Chris, that's what they really have won with for two years, misdirection trap, misdirection option, so that they can freeze those linebackers. But really, it was great running on Huckleberry's part because Heinfrider was right out there for make the tackle for no gain, and he just bypassed it and went to the first half. Huckleby, 25, five carries, 14 yards. They up back behind Leach Davis. The deep back is Huckleberry. Huckleberry for more yardage to about the 22. Maybe getting four yards before two Notre Dame men, 74 is Weston and 75, Jay Case, make the stop, and Gene Calhoun, the referee, and the umpire, Leslie Ruland of North Madison, Ohio, spot the ball at the 23. This is where the home field has a big advantage. If you, they were in Michigan, the stands would be going wild. The momentum would be gaining for Michigan. Clayton, 22, in a wide slot position inside Feaster. Davis carrying. Golick, 55, right on his belt buckle. Golick, number 55, as Bo Schoenbecker shouts. Easy now, Bo. Heimkreider helped Golick on the tackle. And now, let's see, the ball is inside the 20. Michigan's deepest penetration. And they're going to have another key third down. They've got nearly five yards in order to make a third down conversion right here. Notre Dame leads seven to nothing, 10-27 remaining in the first half. From the wishbone, they send a wide receiver to the far side. Marker down, Huckleby has the ball. He has more than enough yardage, but let's wait for the penalty. Randy Harrison on the stop inside the 10. Chances are there's all setting penalties. I believe the headlines have dropped a, a penalty on uh, 33 Davis for blocking, maybe clipping. I'm not sure. Offside against Notre Dame. Oh, they refused. Decline. No, he didn't. Now Michigan is threatening. They have moved the football on their own to the Notre Dame six, and it's going to be a first and goal. Trap option again. One of the best plays in football introduced about three years ago by Missouri they're setting up in a wishbone formation first and goal from the six now they shift Mitchell to the near side hitting quickly was Russell Davis on a handoff from Leach 
77 is Mike Calhoun there in the green jersey. 55 Golick and 70 Scott Setter. The carries to the four. It's going to be second down and goal. Michigan started this drive from the Notre Dame 49. Notre Dame scored, taking advantage of an opportunity. Four plays, 16 and a half yards. Montana to Grindinger. They live. They lead rather. Seven to nothing. Score came early in the ball game. Touchdown, Michigan. Russell Davis blocking for his quarterback, Rick Leach, and nearly the all-time quarterback in every department at Michigan, goes in for his third rushing touchdown of the year. Now, number one can tie it up, Wilmer. This is the option where he fakes to the fullback, goes right down the line. Notre Dame Ian ran up the field, Case, and he turns inside like the quarterback should do and dies for that alumni line. Now the side wheel kicker, Wilmer, can tie it up at 7-all. 9.39 in the first half. It's up. And a bullet-like kick ties the ball game. 49 yards in nine plays. A four-yard touchdown by quarterback Rick Leach. We'll be back for more excitement. This battle now, we're at 9.39 of the second quarter. Michigan has gone 49 yards, and on the ninth play, quarterback Rich Lee has tied up the ball game. Now we have Virgil kicking off. He's from nearby Buchanan, Michigan, playing for the Wolverines against Notre Dame. Harrison and Stone are deep. 10 and number 42. Nice, easy kickoff. Jim Stone, 42 at the 5. 10, 15, finds a hole. Quickly closed for the Wolverines. Stone comes out to about the 24. The kicker made the tackle. Here's the touchdown again by Leach, who is an outstanding option runner. He has good judgment, quick hands. He knows which decision to make at the right time, and obviously that was the one. Notre Dame got its score after 153 of the first quarter, capitalizing on a fumble by Davis of Michigan. Now. The score is tied. They're going to have to work it themselves. Holahan going in motion to the far side as Montana gives to number 30, Jerome Heavens. Notice how he tried to wiggle as his coach looks on. Chris Godfrey made certain that he didn't get any more yardage. Bringing it out to the 26, it'll be second and eight. There's a good look at Rick Leach. Coach Schimbeckler says he's a perfect quarterback. And by the way, he was batting champion in baseball yes. in 1978 for the Michigan baseball team. We have about a second down and eight. Scores tied at 7-7. Nine minutes, first half. Joe Montana. Oh, did he pinpoint that pass with pressure on him? Three Michigan deep men were there. Nick Fair, the sophomore from Cincinnati, number 95. What a catch and what a first down. This is a reverse bootleg. The first choice is a split in. The second choice, the fullback. They're both covered. Look at him. Watch him turn back into the inside and hit there. As Chris said, it was pinpoint oh. all the way. 22-yard gain. Condini, number 80, to the far side of the field. Going in motion is the flanker, Hollihan. First and 10 from the 48. Oh, there goes Ferguson. And for the first time today, we see uh, a seam breaking in the Marion Bluegrass. He just turned too fast. He <laughs> redirected his uh, distance the wrong too fast. But he got to the Michigan 41. There's a gain of uh, 11 yards and a Notre Dame first down. Number two, Mike Corey comes into the Notre Dame lineup. There you see the Michigan strategy board. The score is tied at 7 to 7. Condini to the near side. Heavens, number 30. Getting to the 33. An eight yard pickup, second and two. Huffman, Tim Huffman, and Tim Foley. And later today, well, I hope I can get home in a hurry and see the USC Alabama game from Birmingham. That is going to be a battle, I think. Just what we're watching here. All right, second and two for Notre Dame. They're at the Michigan 34. Whistles and a flag. Whoops. Ouch. 
little restraint must be practiced down there in the trenches a little shoving match Chris the umpire called this uh, penalty he did yeah and it, the only thing that that what usually happens is a guard moves a lineman moves after he's taken his offensive stance that's what happened procedure or position is the penalty Gene Calhoun one of the Big Ten officials here. Incidentally, Notre Dame always uses Big Ten officials in not only football, but basketball, even though they're an independent. I think the Big Ten furnished officials for a lot of independence. A lot of conferences do that to accommodate these uh, independents and don't, don't have any way of you know, That's right. officials. Commissioner Wayne Duke watching this game, his Big Ten representative, the Wolverines, have tied the score on Notre Dame. We replay the down. It's going to be second down and seven. 31 is Holohan. 32 is Ferguson. Well, Dan Devine, as we look at the leprechaun. Chris, the nose guard has been cut off on the last two plays, and when it does, it leaves a gaping hole for the ball carrier. They're double teaming Kreitz on the nose, and the linebacker is not filling for it. Now, another attempt at a third down conversion by Notre Dame. They have a third, less than a yard, at about the 32 of Michigan with a score tied in the second quarter. Seems to be the first down by Vegas Ferguson. Now the indication, Mike Turgovac of Austintown, Ohio, and of the Wolverines made the stop at the 30 and a half. Here you can see the, the nose guard, number 70, I guess it is, 77. That's Mike Turgovac. My, yes, who came in as a substitute. They went into the gap eight on that particular play on short yardage. From the eye, first and 10 from the 31 in Montana. Underneath hits Jerome Heavens. Another Notre Dame first down. Mike DeSantis. Mark DeSantis, rather, on the tackle for Michigan at the 19. Chris, that's the toughest pattern to throw against Michigan there is. Their monster man or wolf man goes to the field. That's the second man out into the boundary off the bootleg fake. Montana number three, first down at the Michigan 19. Seven to seven to score. Hallahan in motion of the near side. Ferguson. Boy, there's some hitting here on the natural turf of Notre Dame Stadium. Newt Rockney helped design this stadium. Capacity crowd of 59,000 naturally. And tickets were hard to come by. For this, the first meeting in 35 years between Michigan and Notre Dame. They're going to play, except for two years, up to the year 2000. 5.55 remaining in the first half. Notre Dame with a second and three. Ferguson trying to get the first down. First and goal for the Fighting Irish. The ball is at the Michigan 8. This is Notre Dame's best sustained drive. Starting at their own 24, they have now reached the Michigan 8. 547, clock running, remaining in the first half. Michigan on a 49-yard drive on the ninth play. Rick Leach went in for the Wolverine touchdown to tie it up. Notre Dame in green. Wingback coming in motion. Callahan. Oh, I don't see a marker yet. Montana was denied yardage. Brayman of Midland, Michigan, in on the stop. And Montana was hit very hard in the midsection. Face mask penalty to Chris. All right. going to give him half the distance. It appeared uh, some early movement in the backfield. Apparently not. He had the man in motion, and I don't know whether the son of snapped it on the count uh, that he called in the huddle instead of changing it. I don't know. But right. Michigan did not cover the tight end again. Here, you see that see. deep back? Yeah. The son of snapped the ball before the count called in the huddle. That's what happened. Personal foul, face mask penalty. So half the distance to the goal line. It goes from the eight to the four, and the down is replayed. First and goal for Notre Dame. Penalties have been tough. Rusty Leach is in at quarterback. All right. 
No, I guess. No, number no, three, Montana Joe Montana gives to Ferguson. Touchdown, Notre Dame leads. Ferguson caps a 76-yard drive as Tim Foley made the block, the right tackle. Ferguson getting his first touchdown of the year. He's the Dervish halfback from Richmond, Indiana. 13 to 7. Here it is from ground level, and you can, if you can see the blocking, they just move back the Michigan defense. Their strength and weight advantage is very evident on that drive. The 11th play produced the touchdown. Four yards, 76 yards. The kick is up by Joe Eunice of Dallas, and now Notre Dame goes out in front 14 to 7. An impressive 76-yard drive, and on the 11th play, Ferguson went in from four yards to put Notre Dame on top, 14 to 7. 521 remaining in the first half. The kick goes to Michigan. That's Roosevelt Smith. And Notre Dame's number 45, Pete Palace. What a sure tackle at the 13 of Michigan. Here's another look at the touchdown from the end zone. It's a straight off tackle play, fullback leading, and you can see the push that the line gave and gave uh, Ferguson a chance to go into the end zone. Frank, thus far, Notre Dame with 165 total yards, Michigan with 60. Rick Leach now from his own 13, first and 10. That's Clayton in motion. Leach has completed one of five. That's Huckleby. Nice move by him. Tremendous athlete brings it out to about the 22 or 23 for nine yards. Maybe enough. Let's see where they spot it. Now it's going to be a second down and approximately one. But wasn't Huckleby brilliant on that move? He set up his block beautifully. The tight end was blocking Brown with a strong safety. He faked in, out, and he set up the block and then circled it. Following this game, Southern California being hosted by number one Alabama right here on ABC. Looking, looking for that one yard was Russell Davis of Michigan. Oh, let's see. He's about the half of a length of a football, it appears, for that much needed Michigan first down. They're inside their own 25. No, they get it. Michigan first and 10. And they spot the ball at approximately the 23 as this special ABC sports exclusive. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Channel 7, KGO TV, San Francisco. Notre Dame Stadium. From their own 13, Michigan has moved now to the 23 of the first and 10. Mitchell in motion, number 30. Rick Leach looks for Mitchell. Oh, overthrown. Number 74, Jeff Weston, put a hard rush on Leach. Just out of the grasp of Alan Mitchell, the sophomore from Detroit. And a special Sunday edition of National Football League action right here on ABC at 9 Eastern time. The New England Patriots and the Oakland Raiders. Boy, what a week of football here on ABC. Then again on Monday night. Oh, yes. Got to keep uh, Frank, Don, and Howard very busy. They love it. All right, Leach now on a second and 10 from the 23. He wants to throw again. Ooh, he almost threw it to Bob Golick of Notre Dame. Leach having trouble going to the pass today. Weston again put the rush on him. Rick has completed one of eight for five yards. This doesn't... Uh, Looked like the normal Rich Leach. He, no. Rick Leach, he threw that ball right to Golick. I couldn't believe it. Looked like that uh, uh, he had lost his, he his helmet, maybe come down over his eyes or something. That was, uh, could have been very disastrous. That six foot five inch Weston is like glue on Leach. Now with a third down and 10 at the 23 of Michigan. Notre Dame leading 14 to 7. Look out. Davis gets it, but Notre Dame's resourceful 33 Jim Browner got back. 
Davis brought down by number 61 of Notre Dame, Bobby Leopold, the linebacker. So that brings up a fourth down and 12 from the 21 of Michigan. Greg Wilner is back to punt. Notre Dame has two men. Randy Harrison, 10, and Dave Weimer, number 34. Notre Dame leading 14-7, 3.23 left in the first half. A beautiful punt by Wilner. That's Weimer. And Michigan's kick coverage, superb. Stopping Notre Dame at the 40. Ben Needham of Groveport, Ohio, made the tackle. And listen to the Irish fans. Oh, that's they've got the momentum, and these crowd, this crowd helps them to keep it. Now, the, set, the situation is this. Three minutes to play, and Michigan, uh, Notre Dame has the type of offense that can run and throw and get the ball in the end zone uh, with this amount of time left. And you know, this field position after a 44-yard punt from their own 40, Notre Dame gets two yards. Ferguson, who scored the go-ahead touchdown, carried on the play, number 32. Curtis Greer on the tackle with a two-yard gain. Notre Dame with a second and eight, and we closely watch the clock. Three minutes, 2.59 to go in the first half. Notre Dame scored first. Michigan came right back, going 49 yards, and on the ninth play, Leach scored. Notre Dame went 76 yards, and on the 11th play, Ferguson scored. 14-7, what a game. Hope you're enjoying it. Condini and Curry. 80 and number two potential receivers as time called by Notre Dame. We're going to take a break and then be back. NCAA football excitement on ABC. Number one ranked Alabama tackles the seventh ranked USC Trojans next. Notre Dame on the left in green. They have the ball. Now it's a second down and eight, 2.43 remaining in the first half. They lead 14 to seven, Montana, what's more? <laughs> trying vainly above his head, trying to bring that ball in was Dave Condini of Cincinnati, Ohio, closely covered by Ron Simpkins of Detroit, number 40 and number 16, Mike Jolly. So with the incompletion, the clock stops at 2.37 in the first half, and it brings up a third down and eight. Montana has completed five of eight for 65 yards and one touchdown to Brindinger. Olahan and Condini set away. Third down play. Ferguson. Ferguson. The midfield stripe just beyond it is the spot he needed to reach. And it appears that he is short, but we'll wait. Third down play for the Fighting Irish. Oh boy, divine. Whatever he's getting paid for, this is this is it. Whether to go for it, and I'm sure he will, with the way his defense is performing. Well, I'll tell you. So, off comes the yep. quarterback, number three, Joe Montana, and number seven, Joe Restick. He's a great punter. Two minutes now remaining in the first half. Michigan trailing 7 to 14. They have Jolly and Harden deep. Here's the kick, low. The spiral. Jolly, 20 yard line. Brings it out to the 28. All right, now the clock is stopped here in the first half. A minute 45. Don't forget at halftime, in addition to the two bands, great music and the Battle of the Bands, we'll have the Fireman's Fun flashback, featuring a look at the last meeting of Michigan and Notre Dame 35 years ago. And there is no finer commentator to do it than Bill Fleming. Sorry we haven't had much time to go down to Bill, but this has been a fast Ooh, what a fast-moving first half. Notre Dame leading 14 to 7. Bill will be your host at halftime, and he'll do it his usual fine way. Davis for Michigan on a first and 10 from the 29. Clock is running. We have a 132 to go. Michigan has three timeouts. Mission offense is not geared to, to attack like this in a two-minute offense. They're primarily a running and with a cautious passing attack. Well, they continue to let the clock run, coming down to the one-minute mark, second and six. Number 80, Doug Marsh, perhaps looked away from the ball. He's from Akron. Coming in on him, and I don't blame him, was Bob Kolick, number 55. Well, that stops the clock. Frank, why wouldn't they use a timeout? Previously, I mean. 
Well, I'm not sure that they feel like they can score. Well, I think they're playing. They're going to try to play concerted. If they get a break and make a good run with it, they'll get down in position maybe for a field goal. But they're really not a catch-up type football team uh, in a minute and a half. All right. They got a minute and eight now. Third and six. And they make the third down conversion on a fine catch by Ralph Clayton, number 22 of Detroit. Heinkreider and Restick on the tackle. Watch again. Lee's right back in the pocket, which Bo has added this year. Drop back passes, and Clayton curls inside. Notre Dame back very wisely, playing deep, giving him the pass in front of him, and trying to make the tackle. Here he is, just curling into the inside, in behind the linebackers, who are picking up the backs, coming out of the backfield. Clayton was a wide receiver, and that's a natural crease inside of the cornerback. All right, it's going to be a first and ten as Bo Schembechler talks to his quarterback, number seven, Rick Leach. They have the ball at the Notre Dame 48. Their only score came from the Notre Dame 49. On the ninth play, Leach went in from four yards to tie it up. Then Notre Dame came back going 76 yards. Ferguson scoring from up close. Now, with a first and ten, a minute and two seconds remaining in the first half, Notre Dame is in the lead, 14 to seven. All this, ABC Sports. But don't forget later, Alabama, Southern California from Birmingham. Wow. Legion Field will be jumping. And Southern Cal with their great speed and their passing game, and Alabama with their running game, and Rutledge throwing the ball will be a great game. All right. Feaster 18, and Clayton to the far side, Leach. Huck Huckleby. Again, not getting control before he turned up. The pass was thrown not in ideally in front of him. Oh, hello there. <laughs> so now we have 56 seconds with a second and 10 for Michigan at the Notre Dame 48. They want to get in position. If they can't score, they want to get a chance at a field goal. And he would very wisely, I think, most coaches would throw uh, parallel uh, swing passes. Wilner last week kicked a 46 yard field goal against uh, Illinois. So he can get some distance. Clayton and Mitchell are set away now for Michigan on a second and 10. Leach, look out. Poor Rick Leach now has three where the players have not hung on to the ball. That was the safety blitz. Brauner coming from the backside, untouched. Leach being left-handed is set up with the back to him, and he nearly got killed. <laughs> All right. Browner, number 33. And you got to miss his brother, Ross, oh. who played here last year. So it's third and 10, 52 seconds remaining in the first half. Leach. All I can say is he was looking back into a bright sun. Yes. So it's fourth down and 10 with 45 seconds remaining in the first half. Wilner comes into the lineup, number one. He's from Miami, Florida. And uh, Notre Dame playing at Cozy. They have number 10, Randy Harrison, back at about their own 35. Waymer at the 36. So with... Okay, there's the touchback. Notre Dame now with 38 seconds left on the clock. We'll snap it from the 20, Frank. What do you think he'll do? I don't know. <laughs> Leading 14 to 7, Dan Devine's Notre Dame team. The offensive unit out on the field. It includes number 95, Nick Ver, a sophomore, tight end. Filling in Kevin Hart. Injured somewhat. Dan Devine this year with the loss of the great Ken McAfee. He's had some problems at tight end. And Joe Montana, number three, coming into the oval huddle of Notre Dame. Many of the 1943 Notre Dame team members are here watching this game. Players like Angelo Bertelli, Ziggy Zorowski. So Notre Dame 
trying to run out the clock cautiously, protecting a 14-7 lead. Here in South Bend is Montana. Loses a yard on the play. It's going to be second down and 11. There you see one of the Huffman brothers, number 78. He's the right guard, 6'5", 262, and his brother, 6'5", 245. He's the big brother, a senior, whereas Tim is a sophomore, and they're from Dallas. Here goes Joe. Gives it to Ferguson coming out to the 29. Now only two seconds. The end of the first half has arrived. The Memorial Library at the far end of the field. There they go into the same tunnel, into the locker room as we go down to Bill Fleming. All right, and I'm with Coach Devine right now, who has to be a happy man with half this football game over. What a splendid job of defense you've done on Michigan. Michigan is a team with a great tradition, as you know, Bill, and, and our guys are just playing their guts out, and I'm very proud of them. We're starting, you know, four 18-year-old sophomores on offense, and I know we've had some penalties. It's a, kind of an ironic one on the, uh, Leach uh, bobs his head at quarterback, and um, the referee's interpretation is that he knows it's against the rules, but they decided in the Big Ten not to call it. So it's kind of put our guys at a little bit of a disadvantage. You mean when they're jumping off? Yeah, that's his exact words. Uh, you know, the, it's a, he knows it's against the rules, but in the Big Ten they've decided to ignore it because he's played for four years. So it's not really a violation of the rules, I guess. So we've got to settle down, and uh, we've lost some crucial yardage, both on offense and defense, because of penalties. Okay, Coach, I know you want to get best okay, of luck. Thank you, Bill. So... The stage is set for the halftime. The both bands are here today, marching band of Notre Dame and also of the University of Michigan. We'll be back for the halftime activities in our Fireman's Fun flashback after this word about an upcoming ABC program. Dame out to the 10. Stone moves out to the 20. Slips and falls forward to about the 23. The Fighting Irish have scored at 13.07 of the first, taking advantage of a Michigan bobble. Then Michigan came back to tie it up at 9.32 of the second quarter. Notre Dame went ahead at 5.21 of the second. 5.21 remaining in Frank Broyles. The halftime stats. Well, Chris, the first downs are fairly close, but that is the only thing. And Michigan has been averaging 2.5 yards per play, and Notre Dame 5-2. All right, with the ball at the 24 of their own, Joe Montana gives to Vegas Ferguson, who scored the go-ahead touchdown from four yards out, and he brings... This rushing play out to the 31. That's a gain of eight. Second down and two, and Godfrey on the tackle. Montana, Ferguson, Heavens, Hallahan, and Condini. Up front, Martinovich, Peransky, uh, replaced today by Houtman. We have Dave Huffman and his brother Tim, along with Tim Foley up front. And Nick Bear. Second and two. Mike Curry goes in motion. First down, Notre Dame, Jerome Heavens. A ripping run as Martinovich, number 76 from Houston, Texas, 6'5", 260. Blocked up front. Up front, Meter, Godfrey, Kites, and Greer for the Wolverine defense. Sebron, Simpkins, and Owens are the linebackers for Michigan. Bell, Jolly, Brayman, and Harden, the secondary. From the 43, first and 10, Notre Dame. They lead 14 to 7, opening moments of the third quarter. Ferguson, number 32, stopped by Tom Sebron. Sebron, number 91 from Detroit, a senior, 6'4 and a half, 214 pounds. Second leading rusher on the team with 493 yards last year. Heavens today has picked up 62 yards. With no gain, we have a second down and 10. Joe Montana, a senior, 6'2", 191 from Monongahela, Pennsylvania, dropped back tight passer curry number two yeah. Yeah. Evans number 30 carrying on the play tough yardage Michigan's defense trying to contain Notre Dame led by Chris Godfrey of Lathrop Village Michigan number 90 and Ron Simpkins number 40 Notre Dame huddle now they're talking over a third down play coming up third down and eight at the 45 their own Condini and Hulahan, potential receivers. Montana spinning, dropping back. What a comeback effort 
by number 80 sophomore Dave Condini of Cincinnati Ohio did he get enough Gene Calhoun the referee is looking over to the headlinesman calls in the chain crew Richard Weiler we mentioned earlier the headlinesman the big one of the Big Ten officials is a lieutenant in the fire department in Chicago have a variety of occupations and what a great job they do in intercollegiate football these are Big Ten officials here's the measurement now for a Notre Dame first down they get it at the Michigan 47. So their drive that started at their own 23 with the second half kickoff. They have now moved it to the Michigan 47 having a 14 to 7 lead 12 42 remaining in the third quarter. Curry number two replaces Hollahan number 31 Condini number 80 is way to the left in the slot is Curry. Notre Dame again trying to establish their ground game before they go to the pass. Ferguson number 32 carrying on the play. No gain. Second down and 10. And you see the blue sky over northwestern Indiana here in South Bend. Perfect day for football and an exciting game. Condini 80. Split to the left. In the slot is Hollahan, number 31. Second and 10. Condini covered too closely by Mike Jolly, number 16. Good call by the official. Here's a look from the end zone. It's just an out pattern. The defensive halfback breaks on the ball thrown, which we refer to as ball time. He comes right up over him, but he makes contact before the ball is there. Bo did not like the call, as you might expect. And of course, from the uh, field position on the sideline, it's very difficult to see a lot of plays. But up high and with the ABC camera, no doubt. All right, Mitchell is in the lineup, replacing Heavens, number 44, first and 10 from the Michigan 39. Montana. Draw, 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 get him, get him. Ferguson, the deep back, number 32, at his shoe top, number 46 of Michigan. That is Jerry Meter, co captain of the Wolverines. Notre Dame are mixing up their plays beautifully inside outside passing and get the third down have to throw it's a completion second down and six the ball just short of the 35 of Michigan Condini and Holohan flanker and split in a second and then a third effort by Vegas Ferguson that's determination by the junior halfback the advances to the 32. Three tough yards, Frank. Third and three coming up. Simpkins hit him in the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah. and he is all Big Ten as a sophomore. But uh, Ferguson just kept going and went for three extra big yards, which makes it third and three, which means that they could either run twice and uh, to make the first down. On third down conversions, Notre Dame is four of eight. Here's a third and three. Ferguson 65 yards thus far. A fake to him. Montana pressured Montana trying to get it on his own. And he gets a Notre Dame first down. Montana. Moves it now to, let's call it the 27, where the Fighting Irish will have a first and 10 with a 14 to 7 lead. 10.35 left in the third quarter. Next week, Notre Dame plays Purdue. Michigan will play Duke. The Blue Devils. Let's bring in Bill Fleming, who did a great job at halftime. Bill? Well, very quickly, uh, Chris, I think we have to bring our viewers up to date on that Penn State SMU game. Can you believe this? SMU is leading Penn State by the score of 14 to 12. Penn State started off 6 to nothing. Then SMU scored to make it 7 to 6. Penn State came back with another bar field goal, a 41 yard one this time. Then Ford to Talbert on a 12-yard pass. It was 14 to 9. Then another field goal made it 14 to 12. We'll keep you up to date on that, and we'll be back with this one in just a moment. Chris, well, lighter than air. What a way to spend an autumn afternoon. A loose ball, Montana to Ferguson, and who recovered it? Michigan. On a handoff, a bobble. Notre Dame turns it over. 
Curtis Greer, number 95, a big defensive tackle, comes up with the ball, and let's see what the Wolverines can do as we look at their head coach. That's uh, Notre Dame's first turnover, Chris. I started to say a few minutes ago it's a big difference from what last week, but I was afraid to jinx them. I don't want to do that to either team. All right, Michigan now, first and 10 at their own 28, trailing 7 to 14. That's Clayton coming in as a slot back at the bottom of your screen. Leach gives it to Huckleby. Leach scored the only Michigan touchdown at 9.39 of the second quarter, capping a 49-yard march. A little sportsmanship there on the part of the defenders of Notre Dame, helping uh, people up, Heim, Kreider, and Golik on the tackle. And the ball now, let's call it the 34. It's going to be a second down and four. To the far side, Feaster, number 18. In the slot is Clayton. And Davis, number 33, is stopped by Bob Golick. Back-to-back tackles. The senior, Willowick, Ohio, 6'3", 244. He led the team in tackles last year, setting an all-time Notre Dame record with 174. We have a third down and two as the turnovers are even, but Notre Dame on the scoreboard leads by seven. 9.26, third quarter. We're that much time away from the Alabama SC game to be seen here on ABC. Remember the thriller last year, 21-20 Alabama? Huggleby driving for a first down. Golick forcing him out of bounds. Three in a row for the All-American. Huckleby number 25, 80, is Doug Marsh. With the ball now to 40. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Leach was bobbing his head on that particular play. Staggered the snap count, as which Devine was, Coach Devine was complaining about at halftime. Huckleby averaging 4.8 yards per carry. 10 carries, 48 yards. Feaster and Clayton could receive a pass, but it's Davis that takes the handoff. First down play in the Notre Dame defense. Golick is 55, and there's number 70, Scott Zetter of Elk Grove Village, Illinois, a junior. Chris, I think the surprising thing is that Davis, who was rushed for over 1,000 yards mm -hmm. uh, last year, has been held to practically zilch during this first half in the first part of the th third quarter. Very little. 28 yards, 11 carries. Leach has completed 3 of 14, far below his previous year's performance. On a second and 10, a very fine effort by Leach. And Leach pulled by Bobby Leopold, number 61. Bobby from Port Arthur, Texas. They come from everywhere to play at Notre Dame, Frank. They have great tradition, outstanding educational school, rich in athletic tradition, and it's tough to compete against them in recruiting if they really want an athlete. Now for the Wolverines, a big play. Third and three at their own 47. down leach well he is resourceful i tell you I, I keep repeating but a quarterback can do it do it himself on third down you've got a winner and he's done it in practically every situation when he had any chance whatsoever that was the triple option out of the wishbone both our quarterbacks montana for the irish for the wolverines leach are winners both seniors and now from the 43 of Notre Dame, first down. That's Clayton in motion, going into the slot now. And the Michigan ground game is chewing it up to the 32 of Notre Dame. And another first down. What happens, what happens, Chris, is, is that when they're going in to score, they think they're going to get a 21 to 7. They lose the ball on a fumble, and the defense takes that field a little bit downhearted. But this is an excellent run by uh, Huckabee, but it was good blocking. It was a misdirection. Linebackers took the fate. Bobby Leopold has made three tackles in a row. Michigan, however, with back-to-back uh, -back first downs, this time from the Notre Dame 32. Huckabee. Oh. 
There's Dan Devine, the Notre Dame coach. His defenders quickly filled what looked like a gaping hole beyond the line of scrimmage at about the 29. Golik center, primarily on the stop. So from the 29, it's going to be a second down and seven on a perfect day for intercollegiate football. Harvest time nearing here in the Midwest. 14 to 7, Notre Dame. 6.33 to go in the third quarter. Second and seven, Michigan. Huckleby is diagnosed for a two yard loss. Mike Whittington, number 54 in green. He's from Miami, Florida. And Golick again. The coaches say that Whittington is just as good as the other linebackers, and they alternate him because they feel it doesn't weaken the team and keeps those linebackers fresh. Well, here we go now. We got about a third down and nine for Michigan from the eye. A flanker, Feaster to the near side. Clayton split. Flag is down. Play stopped. Gene Calhoun, the attorney from Madison, Wisconsin. Let's bring in Bill Fleming. All right, Chris, uh, I know a year ago you covered that Iowa State-Iowa game, and yes. the renewal of that rivalry has the Iowa State team out in front 14 to nothing in the second quarter, scoring on a couple of long passes against the Hawkeyes. Okay, and a procedure call uh, down on the field. So the down will be replayed. It's about a third down and 14. The ball comes back to the Notre Dame, let's call it the 36. Notre Dame leading 14 to 7. Michigan again needing that conversion. Feaster and Mitchell are the potential receivers. Leach is looking, but they're covered. He's chased. He's still looking. Finally finds it. He's near the first down. Doug Marsh, number 80 of Akron, Ohio. Talk about poise on the part of Leach. Let's look at that forward progress. First down. All right. Resourcefulness on the part of Rick Leach, from which began at the Michigan 28. But it's a third down and goal at about the five and a half. Clayton to the far side. Leach, number seven. Did it happen again? Yes. Touchdown. All right. Doug Marsh of Akron, Ohio, number 80. A marker is down. The penalty declined, of course. So it is 14 to 13. 329 remaining in the third quarter. Don't go away. They haven't played for 35 years, Michigan and Notre Dame, and here they are. A possibility of a tie now is number one, Greg Wilner, comes in to try the conversion. What a drive on the 16th play. They capped a 72-yard march. It's up. Tie ball game. Greg Wilner, number one. So, a standoff here in the third quarter. What a ball game. This is the toughest play to defend on the goal line. That's a crossing end. And somehow, Notre Dame missed the coverage, and they're wide open for the touchdown. Doug Marsh. Here he is in behind them, as you can see, wide open. We'll return to South Bend after this. Michigan has come from behind twice now to tie the score. 329 remaining in the third quarter. Notre Dame, Jim Stone at the 10, 15, 20. Coming out to the 24, where Notre Dame now will try to do what they did earlier. Score another touchdown as Gene Bell made the stop. There's the fellow, Doug Marsh, tiptoeing into the end zone, staying in bounds to cap a 72-yard march on the 16th drive. He's from Akron, Ohio. He had a clutch catch against Texas A&M and again against Wisconsin last year. All right, Notre Dame with the ball now at their own 24. Vegas Ferguson, reliable Vegas, carrying on the play as we pause five seconds for 
Local station identification. KGO TV, San Francisco. Dan Devine, 28 and 8 is his record. Won the national championship with the Fighting Irish last year. His team now with a second and five at their own 29. Heaven's carrying on the play, and we move down to Bill Fleming. All right, Chris, a couple of scores from the South today in important games. Georgia is leading Clemson in the third quarter by the score of six to nothing. And in this one, Maryland is out in front of North Carolina, 15 to seven. That game is at halftime now. Okay, back to you, Chris. Okay, Bill. Third down and three for the Fighting Irish. Incidentally, in the Michigan drive, they had three third down conversions, and they scored on a third down play. A great drive. Now it's up to Notre Dame. Third and three. First down, Ferguson. Chris, that's when he needs to be physical on third and three, and he wasn't running for a touchdown. He was running for a first down. The 12th game since 1887. The first in 35 years. Notre Dame winning the last in 1943. Frank Lay coach team winning at 35 to 12. Playing on the Marion Bluegrass, a beautiful field here at Notre Dame Stadium. Fighting Irish from their own 35, first down. What a pileup. Michigan defense gambled and went into a gap defense, shot the gap, and it was successful tackling Ferguson for no gain. Mike DeSantis has been in on a lot of defensive plays today for Michigan, as he was on the last with the score tied at about a minute and a half remaining in the third quarter. Later, Southern California still smarting from their one-point loss to Alabama last year to knock them out of number one and end the winning streak. We'll be on ABC television following this game. Ooh. Ferguson nearly had it on a second down play. So it brings up a third down again. Godfrey put the rush on number three, Joe Montana. Montana is an exceptional football player. He eluded the rush and still got the pass off. Could have been completed for a three or four yard gain, but more than that, it didn't throw him into a third and 18. Right. Third and 10. Montana's completed eight of 12 for 97 yards and one touchdown. The score is tied. Third and 10. Montana. Michigan gets it. Number 46 comes up with the ball. And that is Captain Jerry Meter. And the Wolverines have that momentum going again. They're inside the 35 of Notre Dame. How about that, Chris? They got a fumble and moved down the field for a score, intercepted a pass, and they're back threatening again. Notre Dame are going to have to really rear up and play their very best defense of the game. Here's Montana trying to throw down the middle, which is a little bit risky. And of course, Jerry Mita comes right inside beautifully and plays the ball at his height, protects it, it's seeing protected, duck that shoulder, don't lose it back to him is what the defensive coaches stress. There's Jerry Meter, who made the interception. Now from the 35, make it the 34 of Notre Dame. First down, Leach, Huckleby. Very little yardage, if any, with about a minute remaining in the third quarter. Bobby Leopold gets to 25 and White, Huckleby, and it'll be a second down coming up. Notre Dame with two turnovers, Michigan with one. The last turnover, Michigan went 72 yards and 16 plays to score and tie the game. Roosevelt Smith, number 26, a junior from Detroit, has replaced Huckleby. Clayton, 22, running at the top of your screen. The I formation. The ends are tight. Second and 10. Good gracious. Chris. Just as he was ready to build up a head of steam. Jeff Weston hit him. Wow. Jeff is very large. <laughs> 6 4, 260. Oh, I that can was feel that one up here. And it brings up a third down and 10. The success of Michigan's last drive was 
a situation like this. They did it three times. Now they must do it once more. They did do it again. Doug Marsh, who caught the touchdown pass to tie the game, gets the first down on a third down. Outstanding call, Chris. It was a tight end dragging across. The linebacker went out to pick up the halfback in the flat, and Marsh just drags across inside and in front. Here he is at the right of your screen going across. You'll pick him up wide open. Doug Marsh. Mark Smirge is in the Michigan lineup from the eye, a slot or wingback formation. First and 10 from the Notre Dame 21. Clayton in motion. Smith. Smith is one of the Wolverine speedsters. Didn't have much room on that play. Maybe getting two yards as we look at Coach Dan Devine, who in 1969 beat Bo Schenbeckler when he was coach at Missouri, 40 to 17. Now, with the third quarter ended, the score is tied 14-0. A great afternoon on ABC. We'll be back. Now, we're going to start the fourth quarter at Notre Dame Stadium, a sellout crowd. Michigan has battled back. Now, they have a second and seven at the Notre Dame 18. Rick Leach in a gutty performance, calling signals. Wide open. Touchdown! Doug Marsh has caught his second touchdown pass. Michigan has capitalized on two Notre Dame turnovers to take the lead for the first time. Quite, quite a gutty comeback, Chris. The tight end was wide open. They overshifted their pass coverage, and no one was down the middle. The left defensive halfback should have come across the middle on the flow that way, but he stayed over on the tight end. The middle was left uncovered, and he was wide open for the touchdown. It is now 20 to 14. They started it at the Michigan 35. 65 yards on five plays. Oh, no. Wilner. Failed on the extra point. So it is 20 to 14. 14.55 left in the game. Plenty of time for Notre Dame. But this was a fake option, and the defense did not react. Marsh is wide open. When I tell you wide open, there's nobody in the picture in the second there. The linebacker is the first one to get close to it. And now Rick Leach has two touchdown passes. Here's, here's Marsh going right down the middle. The safety man's covering deep onto to his left and no one down the middle. And there's that song. Okay, Bill Fleming. Well, a bit of a surprise here, uh, Chris. Temple is leading Pittsburgh by the score of 6-3. to three. This is the same Temple team that caused Penn State such fits, you'll remember, in the early part of the season. First game, as a matter of fact, when... Penn State had to win in the last 10 seconds on a field goal. Well, Pittsburgh, which plays North Carolina next week before many of our ABC cameras, and in three weeks against Notre Dame, in against a pretty fighting mad bunch of owls today. All right, thank you, Bill. Michigan kicking off to Notre Dame. That is Dave Weimer. He waited too long. Number 91 is Tom Sebron. And the Wolverines are fired up. The momentum has changed so dramatically. I don't think I can remember a game like this. Except for Michigan's character and determination, they would have been outclassed from the beginning, seemed like, early in the game. But they fought back with two turnovers. And now Notre Dame, which has come from behind many times before, have the type of attack with Montana to do it. Coach Dan Devine, his team at their own 10, first down. They've had one long drive of 76 yards to score. They trail by six. That was Heavens, getting about five yards on the play. Tough yardage, too, Chris. Look at the stats. They've evened up in this third quarter where Notre Dame was way out in front at the half. It's been mostly Michigan because of two turnovers, have changed the momentum, and the game is now 20 to 14. At the moment, we have uh, an injured Notre Dame player. Let's take a break right now. As Michigan has gone on top, scoring twice after turnovers. 
Notre Dame lost Ted Horansky, the offensive left guard in yesterday's practice. His replacement, Jim Houtman, has re-injured his arm. So at left guard is John Leon, number 69. Heavens carrying on the play. It was a second and five. Simpkins, number 40, on the tackle. So it's going to be a third down. The ball is at the 17. Third down and two for Notre Dame. Michigan, and it, excuse me, Chris. Michigan mm -hmm. going into the gap eight defense, and this down, first down is third down. is so critical, so they get out and use their passing game. They want to get a little more uh, field position before they open up. Chris Haynes, number 82, has come in at split end for Notre Dame, replacing Condini. Holohan, 31, to the near side of the field on a third and two situations. Ferguson and Heavens, the setbacks, Montana. And the Michigan defense may have stopped them on third and two. You can see the markers on the far side of the field. Chris Godfrey, first defensively for Michigan. And now Joe Restick will punt on fourth down for Notre Dame. They gambled with a pass to try to get the big play against Michigan's rush, but he had to throw the ball before he was ready in the pattern developed. On fourth and one, Restick, who can really crack him as Jolly and Harden are deep for Michigan. This one only fair, end over end. It's in Michigan territory now, taking a Notre Dame bounce, coming to rest at the 31 of Michigan. Here's Bill Fleming. All right, let's uh, bring you up to date on a couple of uh, games involving Big Ten teams. Ohio State's Art Schleister got his first touchdown of his career as he scored on the uh, three-yard run against Minnesota to make it 7 to nothing. Ohio State scored again on Joel Payton's run, so Ohio State ahead of Minnesota, 14 to nothing. Indiana is leading Rose Bowl champion Washington by the score of 7 to nothing on a one-yard run by Mike Harkrader. Incidentally, you'll see highlights of those games on College Football 78 over most of these ABC stations tomorrow. All right, Bill, Rick Leach on a first and 10 from his own 31 gives it to Davis. Davis, number 33, more than making up for his miscue on the first snap of the ball game with Notre Dame recovering his fumble, was stopped by Randy Harrison. Wolverine cheerleaders. Bill? Now the Wolverines need less than a yard for a first down on second down. They lead 20 to 14. First down, and Davis gets it. Short of their own 45. Notre Dame defenders. Number 77 is Mike Calhoun from Austintown, Ohio. And there's Davis, number 33 of Michigan, going back to the huddle. Rick Leach has quarterbacked all the way. He has thrown two touchdown passes, both to Doug Marsh. Leach scored the first Michigan touchdown. What a player. Now, for the first and 10, the ball is at the 43 of Michigan. That's Mitchell in motion. On the option, very little yardage. Michigan has played airless football since the first play of the game. Notre Dame has had two turnovers, and that's been the shifting of the momentum and the change in the score. The Michigan band, and weren't they good at halftime? Second down to 10 now for Michigan, leading 20 to 14 with 11.33 remaining in the ball game. That is speedy Roosevelt Smith of Detroit. Out of bounds, and let's see if he got into Notre Dame territory. Michigan has come from behind twice after tying it up 7-7, seven, seven, then 14-all, taking advantage of a fumble recovery and an interception to score back-to-back -back on possessions here in the second half. It's a third down and three once more. For Michigan, they've had 13 situations converting on eight. the wishbone and again with a staggered count Frank Burrows you can see Notre Dame lunge and then get back and they were not offside 
19 remaining in the ball game and this brings up a fourth down well don't forget we'll be giving a Chevrolet offensive and defensive player of the game awards following the contest a much sought after award of a thousand dollars to the players school his name permanently inscribed in the the general scholarship fund of each Bob Lund vice president of General Motors head of Chevrolet here watching with Tom Adams today as the ball comes down at the 21, Tom Gibbons feels it for Notre Dame, and they'll try to move it from their own 21. We'll see that following this. I don't know what it is, but every time I team up with Frank Broyles on intercollegiate football, we got an exciting rock'em sock'em game. The last was USC UCLA at the end of the season, and Frank. Aren't you glad you're not coaching? Oh, I was looking at the expression on Devine's face. Looked like he had the game won going away, and now he's trailing in the fourth quarter. His team with the ball at their own 21, first and 10. Montana. Boy in traffic. Throws the ball. And the intended receiver was Evans, number 30, and here's Bill Fleming. All right, David Hill, a defensive back of SMU, has just run 40 yards with an intercepted pass, and the Ponies are leading Penn State, can you believe it, 21 to 12, after that tremendous performance of Penn State, 19 to nothing over Ohio State last week. SMU was lying in the weeds, and Bobby Goodrich couldn't be happier. Bobby Goodrich, our producer, former SMU N. SMU played Notre Dame at the opening of this stadium in 1930 and lost. All right, second and 10, Montana. Evans caught the pass, looked for blockers, came across the 25, and Mike Jolly made the stop there. From the 21, it is spotted at the 26, so here's a third down and five. 10.42 left in the game. It's up to Montana. He's got to make a big play, throw it accurately, scramble if he has to. That was the turning point for Michigan when Leach scrambled out and hit the key third down pass for the first down and keep their drive going. Hullahan coming to the near side of the field on third and five. Montana has Chris Haynes opposite. Chris going out. Chris there. Chris gets it. Was he inbounds? Absolutely. All right. Chris Haynes. Chris, I can't tell the fans what a sensational play this is. Oh, but we have a marker down. Uh-oh. Haynes is right on the boundary, right in the crease. A costly oh, my personal goodness. foul penalty. But it was a great catch. He's right in the crease. The ball is there right on target, and Haynes pulls it in. Diggs was covering him on the play, but the officials spotted an infraction. Oh, you hate to get penalized on third down, 15 Ooh. yards, because it now makes it third down. Personal foul against Notre Dame. Notre Dame has taken it on the... It was the first down. Penalized. It was after oh. the block play. Dead ball foul. That's a break for him. That's a break for him. It's a lesser of two evils, Chris. Be well, first and 25. Now, evidently, the pass had been caught when a Notre yeah. Dame lineman okay. uh, used his hands, personal foul, so they bring the chains up, first down, penalized in 15 yards, now it's first and 25. Well, I'll tell you, you have to have a few breaks oh. in football, don't you? That was a tough break for the call. Some Notre Dame lineman must have gotten just a little bit over anxious. Uh, warming up is number six, Rusty Lish. For Notre Dame, Joe Montana has quarterbacked all the way. Pete Pallas, number 45, replaces Heavens, number 30. With a first down and 25, the spot on the field is the 27 of Notre Dame. Yeah. A long pass. Callahan, yeah, number 31, no way he could get to that bomb. Joe Montana of Monongahela, Pennsylvania, had it 45 yards in the air. Montana now has completed 11 of 18 for 118 yards and one touchdown. He's the senior. 
So it'll come back as a second and 25 from their own 27. We have 10.09 left in the game. Michigan coming from behind twice to lead 20 to 14, failing on their last touchdown conversion. They took two turnovers and turned them into touchdowns. Right. Number two, Curry. Jim Stone is in the lineup, number 42. Pulled in by Mike Harden. Look at those Wolverines, delighted with another turnover. Intercepting Joe Montana. Montana is scrambling out to the right, and he throws the ball a little bit under duress, and then Harden comes in front of him. What, that's what the coaches call ball time. While the ball's in the air, he gets forced inside by the quarterback. Receiver does. The, he's open, but then Harden comes in front of him for a sensational intercept. And with that turnover, field position at the Notre Dame 42, first and 10 for Michigan, leading 20 to 14. Ten minutes to go in this game. Russell Davis, number 33, carrying three turnovers by Notre Dame, two interceptions, and a fumble recovery by Michigan. There's the st statistical information for you see the clock running 2014 Michigan a rematch of last year's SC Southern California Alabama game coming up following this one and don't forget preceding the Alabama SC game with a Prudential College scoreboard with Dave Diles and Andrea Kirby second down and nine for Michigan Rick Leach going long Clayton, a 42-yard touchdown. Leach has thrown three touchdown passes today. Well, a turnaround from the first half where he was frustrated, throwing the ball wildly in the first half, and he's been on target in this half. Clayton ran a post route down the middle. The safety man was covering a tight end in the flat. Notre Dame's right halfback did not have the speed to cover him. It they was didn't. a beautiful throw. Clayton is going right down the middle. Quarterback has got him man for man, but he's trailing him by five yards. Rick Leach continuing his lead in touchdowns thrown at Michigan. Three of them today. Dave Waymer put the hit on Ralph Clayton of Detroit, a junior, number 22, who is, there he is. The toughest pass to throw, Chris, is that post pattern in front of the safety, but there was no safety man there. Just wow. laid it up perfectly, and Clayton ran under it for the touchdown. Oh, that's good news that Clayton is now running off the field. Or Dr. Gerald O'Connor of the Michigan staff will be checking him, I'm sure. It's been something like 15 years since Notre Dame lost two games consecutively back to back. That's right, the last time they had two consecutive losses, 1963, when Hugh DeVore was coach. The following year, Era Parsegan came in and had nine and one. Now they're going for two. I in, wide open. Oh, and they lost with a missed point after, and now failing on a try for two. Jim Browner coming in to stop Leach. The score is 26 to 14. Notre Dame trailing by 12. Both teams will remember this, their second game of the season. Michigan coming from behind, now leading 26 to 14, capitalizing on three turnovers. Notre Dame now get the ball. Virgil's kick goes to Jim Stone. A hard hit at the Notre Dame 21. Let's go to Bill Fleming. All right, here's an update, Tris, on the Penn State game. SMU now leading 21 to 19 as Chuck Fusina has just passed to Scott Fitzke. That's in the third quarter. And Pittsburgh now has gone ahead of Temple by the score of 10 to 6, a 16-yard run by quarterback Rich Tricano. And incidentally, Dave Diles and Andrea Kirby will have all of the scores for you on the Prudential College scoreboard immediately following this game and preceding the Alabama SC game. All right, Notre Dame with the ball at the 21, first and 10. Callahan in motion, Montana keeps it on the ground, 
Ferguson dunking for a couple of yards, then stopped at about the 23. Michigan yep. defense are just swarming. Sebron is 91, and 92 is Mark DeSantis. Leach this half has completed five for five, 90 yards. Boy, what a comeback kid he is. Three touchdown passes in this game. Notre Dame at the 21. No gain, second and 10. Montana, pressured. Pressuring him was number 90 of Michigan. That's Chris Godfrey. So it's going to be a third and 10 for the Fighting Irish. In this half, Michigan with 149 total yards. Notre Dame with only 70. It's a turnaround from the first half. Just exactly. Uh, Michigan made half the yards Notre Dame did in the first half. Now Notre Dame only is making half the yards of Michigan. Of course, the points of the tell the story. And now catch up football with 8.31 to go. Trailing by 12, we look at Coach Dan Devine. His team, third and 10 from their own 21. Ball deflected. Tom Sebron, six four and a half, number 91, tipped it away. Intended for Corey, number two. Fourth and ten, and enter Joe Restick. Momentum has shifted, as we said earlier, where Michigan players are playing better on defense than they did any time in the first half. The alignment of blocking with more authority, opening up bigger holes. Restick's fifth punt. He's averaged 37 yards a kick as Jolly and Hart wait to field it. It's up. Hart, number four, brought down at his own 41, but again, Michigan has fine field position. Eight minutes and 16 seconds left in the game. Michigan leading 26 to 14. Notre Dame led at the end of the first quarter, seven to nothing at halftime, 14 to seven, and then, well, it's been all Michigan here in the second half. The Wolverines now have the ball at their own 41 with a first and 10. Next week, Michigan plays Duke and Notre Dame plays Purdue. And it's a week of regional football on ABC. Tomorrow, don't forget college football, 1978 with Bill Fleming. Highlights of many important games. Check your local newspaper for time and station. Huckleberry stopped by Zetter. Forty-two uh, to the 42 for a gain of one. Michigan now will have a second down and nine. They'll try to consume as much of the clock as possible because they have a 12 point lead getting the 26 by failing on a kick point after and a try for two on their last touchdown Feaster and Mitchell set away to this side of the field Leach on the option to Huckleberry Heim Kreider in on the tackle number 58 for the Fighting Irish. And the players now beginning to look a little tired, Frank. The temperature is about 65 degrees, but it's been hard hitting from the very beginning. Well, you know, Huckabee is back in the lineup for the first time this half. Smith played the entire third quarter. I thought maybe he was injured, but I guess he was, Bo was just keeping them fresh. And Bo's team has a third down and five at their own 46. Feaster split to the near side. Wishbone. Michigan player moved early. Marker down. Oh! The penalty undoubtedly against Michigan, and the two Notre Dame players are beside themselves. If they had caught it, they could have refused the penalty. Chris, oh. that could have been a touchdown for Notre Dame. He was wide open. No one would have had a chance to catch him. I don't know. Reese just threw it out wide open. You could see the green between him and the score. I was 61 was Leopold. Good gracious, he's oh. sick. There's Bob Golick, number 55. Doug Marsh, who has caught two touchdown passes today, sort of moved early and caused an offside against Michigan. Of course, declined because it brings up a 
fourth down and five. Passing yards, Michigan 90, Notre Dame 36 in the second half. 6.42 to go, Frank. Well, both, both squads have had 64 rushing plays, but the second half is played in Notre Dame territory. That is 5 foot 10 inch Greg Wilner from Miami, Florida, a senior to punt. Single safety, Waymer. Boy, did they try to block that one. Taking a Michigan bounce. Dead at the 19. And Notre Dame will have to go far in order to score. With 6.33 left in the game. Ah, look there. The Michigan leads Notre Dame 26-14. Oh, that expression on the face of Coach Dan Levine, leading 14 to 7 at halftime. Now his team is trailing 26 to 14. 6.33 left in the game. Notre Dame with the ball at their own 18. First down. Montana. And the Michigan defense getting on Vegas Ferguson. 95 is Curtis Greer in the white jersey. And down at the bottom, let's see what that number is. Number 40. That's Ron Simpkins, who's had a good day. There you see the clock running. All right. 31, Hollahan to the far side. Chris Haynes is the split end to the near side. And second and nine. Montana, good protection. Down the middle. And losing the ball. Who's got it? Was it ruled a completion and a fumble? Gerald Diggs again on top of the play, and Montana has had his problems here in the second half as we welcome the viewers of the Yale Brown. We're at Notre Dame, of course, a replay of the last play. It was beautifully executed by Montana, hitting uh, Haynes right across the middle. He's got the ball, but then a beautiful tackle by 16 Jolly, who's been all over this field today. Knocked it loose, and Michigan recovered. Four in a row for Notre Dame. They lost it five times against Missouri. So now Michigan with the ball at midfield, first down. Rick Leach, a 12-point lead and 5.47 left in the game. For those of you that were watching Yale Brown, number seven in white has thrown three touchdown passes. He had a shaky first half. I think now would be a good time, Frank. This is a young man that was injured during the week and was on crutches. I talked to Bo Schimbeckler on Wednesday, and he said, hey, Frank, a quarterback can't play. I said, Bo, it's not fair that this ball game comes up against quarterback. Or he was hurt on Tuesday. And we haven't mentioned it until now because we don't want to alibi. All right, number 22, Clayton. Notre Dame trying, you saw them ball hawking there, trying to pull it away, and their coaches talk about frustration as Browner was in on the tackle. Gene Calhoun and his staff of Big Ten officials have spotted it at 42. It's going to be a third down and seven. There you see the turnovers. Notre Dame said they couldn't make turnovers and uh, beat Michigan. They'd have to play an error-free game, and they have to. With a third down and seven at the Notre Dame 42, Michigan from the eye and slot back formation left. Following this game will be the Prudential College scoreboard. Dave Dials and Andrea Kirby will bring you up to date on all the scores. Lawrence Reed from Philadelphia Number 23 in the lineup for the first time today. Carried on the play, and Heimkreider, one of the Notre Dame linebackers, stopped him at approximately the 38. And it's fourth down at about two and a half yards. Wilner now will punt on fourth down for Michigan, leading by 12 with 3.58 left in the game. Touchback. So Notre Dame will try to bring it back, and let's get a report from Bill Fleming. Well, Penn State has finally taken the lead against the Ponies of SMU. Here it is, 26 to 21, 22 seconds to go in the third quarter, and Matt Suey 
ran three yards, climaxing a 73-yard drive in 12 plays. And so in that game, Matt Barr has already kicked four field goals, and Penn State has come fighting back to finally take the lead, 26-21. Okay, Chris, I think we have a man down here. Mike yes. Weston. Mike Weston, Chris. Right. Uh, either Weston or Zetter I believe now in a second look from our yeah, spotter man, Bill yeah, Friel sure that yeah. it is Zetter and uh, Bo Schembechler facing up and the left leg of junior Scott Zetter 6'5", 226. Notre Dame today has had some more injuries sustained on this squad and uh, coming in today Michigan 1 and 0 with a 31 to nothing win over Illinois Notre Dame 0 and 1 losing 0 to 3 to Missouri and what a big turnaround pivotal game this is for both teams Notre Dame now from the 20 first down Joe Montana Mitchell across the 30 Dave Mitchell a junior from Phoenix Arizona should be enough for a Notre Dame first and 10 time running out with 341 left in the game Michigan leading 26 to 14. Bo Schembechler. Graduate of Miami of Ohio got his master's degree from Ohio State. Out of bounds on the catch was number 82 Chris Haynes. We have the Florida State University of Miami audience now joining us here in South Bend, Indiana, Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame took a 7 to nothing lead. Michigan tied it up in the second quarter. And then Notre Dame went ahead leading 14 to 7 at halftime. They have not scored in the second half, whereas Michigan has scored almost at will, taking advantage of turnovers. Notre Dame errors, four in a row. And there was a long completion. Joe Montana to Dave Condini. But time is running out on the Fighting Irish. 26-14 with 3.15 to go, and Condini is hurt on the play. He caught the pass, not Haynes, as I originally thought. And the advance is out to about the 48-yard line. As we remind you again, following the Prudential College scoreboard at 4 Eastern time, we will be going to Birmingham, Alabama for the Alabama Southern California battle. Legendary Bear Bryant with his quarterback Jeff Rutledge, a rematch of last year's thriller. Both teams are 2 0 this year as we see the play again. This is the play coming up, number 80, Condini going across the middle, and the ball right in the numbers. This perfect throw. First down. We're glad to report Condini is running off now to the near side of the field. Jerry Meter made the tackle, co-captain of Michigan. <laughs> now a penalty being stepped off. Another personal foul. That's about four today for Notre Dame against Notre Dame. So that brings the ball back to the 33. First down and 25. Coach Dan Devine. Sad place to be in, I'll tell you. You don't know what to do. Everything turns against you, turns sour. Condini and Holohan set away from the line in Montana. Still trying. Gets it back out to the 48. That was a first down, bringing up a second as Jim Stone caught the ball. So now the Notre Dame fans they had a lot to cheer about in the first half, but for the second half, this partisan crowd, it's been pretty gloom. But for Michigan fans, it's been a second half to behold, and the performance of Rick Leach, their quarterback. They'll be talking about this comeback for a long time in Michigan. Second down and 10. <laughs> Dean Maztec. What a sure-handed catch, then pulled away near that forward stake on the far side of the field. Apparently a loose ball, 
in that pileup. Don't tell me we have five in a row. Well, they haven't signaled yet, Chris. They have not given a signal whether he was down or not. Now they have. That's five turnovers in a row, Frank. Five straight possessions. They've turned the ball over on their end of the field. So now we have 227 left in this game. And the Michigan bat is delighted. 227 to go. Michigan with one turnover, which led to Notre Dame's first touchdown, a fumble. At the 16 and a half, and Notre Dame quickly took advantage, but it's been Michigan here in the second half. Notre Dame with five turnovers. First and ten from their own 43. Rick Leach. And hitting just as hard as he was earlier after taking a rest, and Smith replacing him as Harlan Huckleberry. Mike Calhoun on the tackle for Notre Dame. Going back rather slow in the huddle, Michigan use as much time as they can and still avoid the penalty, if possible. Ed Kasparic is in now replacing Feaster. Kasparic, number 81 to the far side of the field. He is a wingback. So Huckleby is given the call and he gets up near midfield. Getting maybe to the 49 and that brings up a third down and about five for the Wolverines in the lead 26 to 14 with a minute and 40 seconds to go. We again go down to the grass field and Bill Fleming. Well uh, Chris let's uh, first of all give tribute to the men who have been voted as the outstanding players of today's game. On offense. Rick Leach, the quarterback of the University of Michigan, senior quarterback who has started every game but one. And in his name, to the General Scholarship Fund at the University of Michigan by Chevrolet will go the sum of $1,000. And the senior defensive player of the game is Jerry Meter from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, who is a co-captain of the Michigan team, number 46. He played outstandingly today, making a key interception that led to a Michigan score. And so in his name to the General Scholarship Fund of Michigan goes $1,000 from Chevrolet. Congratulations to Rick Leach and Jerry Meter for their performances in this game. Bill is just a tremendous comeback by the Michigan Wolverines and to capitalize on consecutive errors that shows a lot of poise on the part of Michigan. They have the ball now with a third down and five. At about the 49 we have a minute and 40 seconds left in the game. Rick Leach, the man yeah, Bill was talking about, is the offensive player. Huckleby. Oh, he had to go laterally far. He turned up. He's showing his speed. As Mike Whittington, number 54, made the stop, forcing him out of bounds on the far side of the field. I'd like to thank our spotter, Bill Friel. Again, doing it his 21st year at a booth with me. And Rick Bernstein, our statistician. And Frank, we'll catch up with you uh, one of these weeks. <laughs> Next week, Era Parsegian and I will be doing Indiana, Nebraska, and you'll be where? Pittsburgh and North right. Carolina in Pittsburgh. We have a measurement now in Notre Dame territory with a minute 34 left on the clock here at Notre Dame Stadium. So the grass really was not a negative for the Michigan Wolverines, nor was this home crowd. Michigan, of course, they won last year against Purdue on grass field, and I think maybe that kind of broke the, the jinx a little bit in their minds, at least. Of course, Michigan is accustomed to big games, and they've been out on the coast in Rose Bowl the last two years, many of these same players, and where the Parson crowd was against them, and so they, they reacted like a good football team does. They're Big Ten champions the last two years. They're just a credit to the game of football. And, of course, these are bordering states, Michigan and Indiana. Although they haven't played in 35 years, that rivalry took, it was no problem renewing it and getting the tension high for the last couple of weeks. Now, Wilner gets off a punt on fourth down and one, and Waymer of Notre Dame. Oh, there's an effective weapon. Wilmer has done a good job of kicking all and during the ball game, particularly when they were backed up in the first half with poor field position. He kept Notre Dame at bay, you might say, and uh, protected their lead until they, I mean, protected the game until they got going in the second half. 
had those smiles of victory and we saw the expression of defeat on the face of Dan Devine because this will make him 0 and 2 as the defending national champions. The dire agony of this type of loss does more harm to a coach and the squad and fans than any I know. When you think you've got it won and then lose it. And now at their own five, Joe Montana continues to try to get the yardage. Incomplete. So it'll be a second down at 10, and we have a minute and 19 seconds. Dean Mat Matistic went off his fingertips as Montana now today. 16 of 27, 207 yards, and one touchdown. His counterpart for Michigan, and there's Bo Schembechler. He is a happy man because he thought things were going against him early and he didn't know where he could pull it out, but he just has, his team has a character and they did it. He said this was the most important non-conference game of his lifetime. Montana. Second down and 10. Intended for Maztec again, off the fingertips. So, it's going to bring up a third down and 10 for Notre Dame. Notre Dame next week against Purdue. Michigan will go against the Duke Blue Devils. Notre Dame has just got to change uh, and eliminate the turnovers. That's the thing that's cost them two ball games. Five, two weeks ago, five today. I've never seen so many consecutively as we have in the second half, Frank. Most unusual. But then to have a team take advantage of those turnovers is no to add insult to injury a safety Chris Godfrey coming in and getting on Montana I'll tell you when things go they go that's we talk about momentum Chris and that is a factor in any football game when things start going your way that little something extra in your block and your tackling and your warding off blockers is, is the difference in how the game turns out and Number 95 is Curtis Greer. Following this game will be the Prudential College scoreboard. I know that Dave Diles and Andrea Kirby are poised with their... Joe Restick. A free kick following a safety. And it's taken by... Number 22, Ralph Clayton, and a fine run back of that free kick, Frank, with a minute and one second to go, back to the 40. Rick has completed 8 of 19 for 111 yards. One part of that yardage is a 42-yard touchdown strike. And in at quarterback now for Michigan is B.J. Dickey, a sophomore from Ottawa, Ohio. Michigan with the game well in hand, uh, just ran a second down and five play. Lawrence Reed getting it from sophomore quarterback B.J. Dickey. Notre Dame leading at halftime 14 to 7. So let's watch Dickey, star of the future, perhaps for Michigan. Calling signals, he has a third and three. And Lawrence Reed, the junior fullback. 86% win since he's been in Michigan. And you hear the Michigan fans. The final score 28 to 14. Travel arrangements made. 28-14, that final score. 